Where is your strength? Where is it gone, man? Look at your precious sorceress. An old crone, weak, withering, dying. Are you ready to kneel now, proud warrior? The moon rises to its apex. <sighs> Do you hear? Huh? The Alpha and the Omega. Death and rebirth. And as you die, so will I be reborn. Hello, folks, and welcome to the Sin Beef Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Gary Hill, and with me uh, today, this afternoon, well, this evening, some of us, is uh, from the Grave Shift Radio, Mr. Ryan Lewis. How you doing, sir? <laughs> What's this Grave Shift Radio you speak of? This is the show that I know you from, and, and from being my friend, of course, you know, because you're, you're a stand-up guy, you know. Yeah, I'm, I, I'd like to say I'm doing well. This is probably the high point of my week because uh, work and quarantine bullshit, but other than that, I'm pretty okay. And uh, writer and filmmaker in general, uh, Mr. Cameron Scott, how you doing, sir? Uh, you know, all things considered, I'm doing great. I'm about ready to enjoy our new deck outside. Cool. You can enjoy it on your own, see, you know, social social distancing, you know. Yeah, that's is, is the way it was intended. Because, <laughs> yeah, our Lord and Savior will be resurrected tomorrow, and he, uh, he, he put that there for you and me. You know, it's all good stuff. Yes. And might I add, praise Crumb. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I go watch Jesus Christ Superstar and laugh my ass off, man, because Judas got soul, baby. He's got soul all day long. <laughs> Him and that Pontus Pilot fellow. I'm going to leave that alone, though. But <laughs> uh, Third guy of the show. Um, he's a filmmaker of his own now, and it kind of excites me. Uh, been a while since he's been on the show. Been a while since he's been on any show. My friend Philip O'Neill, how you doing, sir? Hi, Gary. I'm doing fine. Thank you for having me. Cool. You're welcome, man. Always welcome. But um, I'll start the show, and I, I imagine Philip's going to have a pretty long list for this, because I always see Philip watching all kinds of stuff on the internet, and <laughs> I watch one of the movies that he mentioned, I I am not disappointed, let me tell you. And I, <laughs> I'll ask him first, though, what you've been watching, Philip? What I've been watching recently? Yes. Uh, Albert Pune movies. <laughs> That's what I've been nice. watching. Yeah. I, I was listening to John Cross podcast, you know, After Movie Diner. Yes, sir. He did, he did an episode on Albert Pune, and I was like, oh, yeah, I haven't, I've only seen a few Pune movies. I need to see more, and I started watching in chron- chronological order. So I'd already seen Sword and Sorcerer, but I hadn't seen Radioactive Dreams, for example, so I watched that, and uh, Nemesis, and uh, and then at some point I, I had to give up. <laughs> oh, Nemesis, <laughs> I think I stopped. Nemesis is a fine film, man. Come on now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but by the end of the 90s, when he was doing, like, you know, like a movie with Charlie Sheen, I just, okay, I, I, this has to end. I just, <laughs> this is going down. <laughs> I couldn't take it anymore. So, um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's what I've been watching, basically. Um, and that's been quite, quite interesting, I'll say. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Ryan, what you been watching, man? Well, I have um, been doing my due diligence in being a great father, and I introduced my 12-year-old to Hellraiser 1 and 2. There you go. And uh, he likes it, so uh, you know I'm I'm working on trying to find him a good uh, at least 3D printed uh, Hellraiser puzzle box that will open and close for him and shit. So that'll be fun. Uh, other than that, I just recently today, I believe it was on. Um, could have been, could have been um, Netflix. It was uh, some series, a new series, Dracula. I watched that, which was pretty fucking interesting. You know, it got a had decent amount of gore and, and shit, and it you know it fucked around with the timeline and everything else, but it was still pretty good. And other than that, I've just been working, man. I haven't been watching anything. Fair enough, man. Cameron. Oh gosh, <clears throat> I've been watching so much. We got a month worth of that. Uh... CBS All Access channel, you know, free for a month. So we watched uh, the whole season of that Star Trek show, uh, Picard. Watched that. Uh, watched about half the new Twilight Zone series, which I don't know if I'm quite sold on that. A couple yeah, episodes were pretty good. Kind of lackluster at a lot of points. 
I, I like the one about the, the the first episode about the comedian. I, I identified with that one. I uh, had a short story that I wrote one time that was very similar. So I was just like, oh, okay, that, that would have worked. But uh, <laughs> and then for uh, basically I've been just writing so much that I haven't had a lot of chance to watch a whole lot of TV or any movies. But uh, I did watch Maniac. The original, the the '80s, <laughs> Maniac, and uh, the incredible two-headed transplant. Oh yeah, uh, for the <laughs> nice, yeah, for nice. the new uh, podcast. Yeah, for the new podcast I'm doing. That was the first two episodes of one was Maniac, and the other was two-headed transplant. Mm. Which I hadn't watched like outside of the Rift Tracks version in years, you know, and I was just like, God damn, that movie's still pretty good. Is that the little Bruce Stern? Is that the? I, thought, I was gonna. Yeah, up. Bruce. Bruce Dern and uh, Casey Kasem, yes. and, uh, Pat Priest from uh, the Munsters. So yeah, it was it was pretty good. But yeah, that's about it. And I've been working on getting um, getting that new podcast out. <laughs> cool. Oh, I watched a few things. Um, I, I've been watching a lot more Smallville lately because I've been just running through the series. Because I like you do when you start Smallville because it is the cream of the crop of superhero shows in my opinion. I I, I still really enjoy the hell out of it. Uh, besides that, um, for no for no reason, but for the fact that Duty put out his Plex account, I watched Caravan of Courage and Ewok Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this this should be on Disney Plus, and I'll tell you why. Because you know it's not it's not for my eyes, obviously, it's not for almost a forty year old's eyes, but the children would really love it. You know, I think because you know the kid the kid actors are really shitty. I mean, they got the boy. Who's clearly looked like Luke Skywalker, but he doesn't. But he trying to look that way. Dude, he looks like Luke Skywalker fucked a pig and had a baby. Yes, That's what he looks like. <laughs> the big ass nose. Um, little girl is supposed to be Drew Barrymore, of course. Looks just like her, you know. It's uh, but you know what? The the story kind of sucks. And those fucking space bears need fucking subtitles. And then when you get to the second one, dude, and then fucking, oh, your whole family is dead! And now, you know, that's when it gets interesting. You got Brimley in that motherfucker, though, so. <laughs> what are you doing knocking on my door, goddammit? <laughs> I, mean, I, I gotta see why it's good, though, because the creature effects in the movie are, are pretty top-notch, because they pretty much had the whole team from Star Wars making this movie, so they're all stop-motion and guys in suits. And this is where I live. I, I love it. Yeah, I'm not going to hate at you for liking those movies. I enjoy them for what they are, frankly. I've got them on DVD, and occasionally I whip them out. It took like 40 minutes to get into the real Ryan, but like I said, it wasn't made for me, though. It was made for, like, nine-year-old me who watched another Disney Channel. And, you know, so I, I think these should be on Disney Disney Plus, and I don't know what they're, what they're sitting on them for. Is it right? I, think- I don't know. I think Hellraiser should be on Disney Plus. Do it. That's something for Do kids. <laughs> <laughs> and I watched a bunch of those. I watched a bunch of uh, Hellraiser sequels that, that Phil told me begged me not to watch, and I was like, "It's too late, man! It's too late!" You know. But we're doing those. For, we're doing those for the sloppy second segments, which you'll hear. I believe Bloodline on this episode, the review of Bloodline, and that's uh that stars Adam Scott, Adam Scott's hair, and it's, it's kind of mm-hmm. awesome. Blunt line is a lot better than it deserves to be. Well, the the, the, the flashback stuff is good. The, the rest of it's kind of... Yeah. yeah. I remember seeing that one at drive-in. Damn, it's been a while. It's been a lot better, too. Plus, I want to touch Angelique's butt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Touch it, man. Touch it all day long. It's a shame that the mansion fucked it up. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot more of those... I'm still looking for that, that, that German uh, Blu-ray rip of, of it, too, so I can watch the, the real version of the movie. Uh, I, need to s- I need to see the version where it has the clown Cenobites, the original fucking uh, clown things from hell that Angelique yeah. turned to him. I need to see that. I've read all about it. I'm a Hellraiser geek and no matter fucking what I'm a fan of this stupid ass series because the first two were amazing and I watch them doesn't fucking matter and uh, I just need to see it. Oh well did, did I mention? Did, I don't know if I mentioned this last time on the other show but I'll mention it now I don't think I did though. Robotrix is a movie I watched for research for this Second expansion of the commentary show that I'm gonna do is it's what they call a category three Hong Kong action movies for like 1989. It's on it's on Prime right now. Just picture breasts, we, we mixed in with Terminator and RoboCop 
and fucking kung fu and shit. And you got Rofuka Robo Tricks and it's fucking nuts. And Oh, that sounds like it's right up my fucking alley. You, you What's it called? Robo what? Robo Tricks. Uh, T-R-I-X. Gotta write that down. It's, uh, it's kind of wonderful. <laughs> and um, Man, oh man. There's a scene where a guy gets his head caught in a suitcase, and I'm not, that's all I'm going to say about that, And because I don't want to give any more away. It's just, uh, I think the wire work is nuts, nuts in Street Fighter. Wait till you watch this movie. It's, uh, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, that's about it for me. You know, I've been meaning to catch up with a lot of things, but I, I haven't done that yet. But um, next time it's been a while since two of these guys have been on here, so I'll start with these guys. We do a segment called The Beef Bitches of Mashed Potatoes. Okay, who gets the burly uh, beef? I ordered barbecue beef. I think that's mine, but I didn't who order gets fries. The barbecue beef? Mine's the Duke Deluxe. Okay, who gets the burly beef? I heard that. We're, um, I'm going to say try to keep it COVID free because I don't want to hear about that stuff on here. No, pro- no, no offense, but. Well, anything pissing you off besides, uh, you know, the world in general, you know, incidents, accidents, perhaps, I don't know. Okay, you're saying COVID free, but I'm going to mention something that's because of it, but not it. That's fine, go ahead. All right, I work, I'm a, uh, a lead maintenance guy in a fucking Walmart. That's That's my job. And these motherfuckers, these fucking piece of shits, dropping rubber gloves all over the fucking floor, dropping it on the fucking ground, dropping them in the parking lot, dropping them in carriages, dropping them all over the place. Anyone listening to this, if you do that, I hope you fucking die. (laughs) I'm going to be honest, because that is the worst scumbag shit in the world. Be respectful. Throw that shit out. That's what's pissing me off. Yeah, it is. Well, pretty, it's pretty disgusting. But um, Philip, you're up, brother. Oh, what I've been doing? No, no. That... What's what's making you angry, man? I need I need a good beef here, man. You're such pissy off. Ah, uh, well, the um, well, the coronavirus. Well, yeah, there's <laughs> that. Yeah, fucking pissed because it's fucking up the film industry. Yeah. So uh, it's like so many productions are being uh, just getting you know, been shut down. So the I've been you know. Try, trying to work in, in the film industry is difficult enough, but so uh, yeah, that, that's been Amen to that. yeah. So that's really yeah, yeah. Basically, that really coronavirus. <laughs> okay. Cameron, what about you, brother? Oh, I wish I could say my my beef was wasn't corona related, but uh, <laughs> it's because of because of it. Um, actually, today another film that I was working on, I was supposed to be working on in July and August, got. Uh, push back pretty much indefinitely until you know uh, better news comes around so that's the third film and oh in about the last four weeks that i was supposed to be working on that got canceled and it's just yeah i don't like it I, I mean i realize this what's happened in the world and everybody's experiencing it but uh this was shaping up to be a pretty good year you know for for me as an indie filmmaker actor writer whatever you know <laughs> but now it's just going to be a lot of sitting at home and a, a lot of writing i'll have a bunch of scripts that i won't be able to shoot <laughs> but uh, yeah i wish i wish i could gripe about anything else but everything else is pretty damn good okay yeah this is uh <laughs> this is about the grocery <laughs> store in general yeah i i hate the place as it is and you guys know this i hate the place suzanne hates the place you know but Today, um, what's you there? Oh man, you got you got a special breed of people out there now, which they're supposed to be staying further away from you, but they crawl up your ass even further, you know, and don't want to go and commute, you know. I was at a a retail outlet today. I'm, I'm going to call it all these because you know <laughs> how many people uh, live where, where I live. But you know, in the U.S., we have a spot that's called all these. It used to be like a discount store where. Your parents would be ashamed to shop for, but now they made it a haven for fucking bougie motherfuckers to go buy goat cheese and shit, which is, it's not a good move for, 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 for me. And, you know, they're like invading my space, let's put it that way. So I had this white woman today, and I don't identify myself as myself as a white way too ghetto for all that. So, uh, she was say about an inch away from my face because I was in her way at the salad dressing section. And, you know, my, my thing is, if you see a person out in public that you don't know, and you don't know their mannerisms, or you don't know how they're going to react to things, don't do things like that. 
I'm claustrophobic for Christ's sake. I, 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 it's how I avoid big crowds. So if you get too close to me, I, you surprise me, you might catch an elbow in the back of the head. I'm just throwing it out there. It's, just, it's, it's crazy, but you know, I, I, you know, when it comes to, you know, fight or flight, I'm probably going to fight. And, you know, that's just, uh, the Irishman in me, probably. You know, just, um, I haven't been drinking a long time, though, so that, that, that part of my Irishman is over, but, you know, people... Well, uh, in this, oh, this day and age that we are living in, and everybody's got a cell phone with the cameras, I am greatly lis- looking forward to the moment where I see Gary fucking Hill throwing an elbow in some white woman's face. Yeah, that, that's a two-minute minor, man. Two, two, for, two, two for elbowing, and you go in the box for that. You feel shame, you know, but it, it's, uh... It'd be more like an involuntary reaction at that point. I just can't stand uh, people doing that and people lining up their carts. I, well, I'm great. I don't see this anymore. I'm grateful. I don't see people lining up their carts side by side to block an aisle to talk about their fucking children and shit. Mm. Con- conversations you could have when you get home or something or when you leave the store. And uh, I don't have that much anymore. So there's certain things about the grocery store that I don't have. But I did see unruly kids running around the store for the first time in a long time and just touching everything, I'm like, get a fucking, get a fucking lead for these brats, okay? Get them a goddamn harness. They ain't acting right, man. Mm. I would love to put, I would love to have a child just put a harness on, like, hey, what was that, you know? You ain't acting right, man, you know? (laughs) Oh my gosh. I've always tempted to just trip the little bastards myself. I've I've done it in a restaurant, man. I've done it in a restaurant. I've seen it done. Fucking going going to Olive Garden, you know, which is a place I hate, and see kids like running back and forth, and the parents say nothing. I just nudge my toe out and see what happens. You know, it's just you you hate Olive Garden. It's it's not Italian food, okay? It's not. No, it's not. It's the fast no. food of Italian, but it still tastes good. I get the I get the 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 soup and the salad and the breadsticks, and I'm good. I, I can't eat the the. Brian, let me explain something, okay? If you work for a semi, even a fast a fast casual Italian restaurant. And you don't know how to drain pasta, you shouldn't be working there, okay? <laughs> yeah, but when you're there, you're family. So, <laughs> so they say, yes. Oh, God. Uh, oh man. Yeah, oh. as as a part Sicilian, that place just offends me, to be honest. <laughs> you know what? I, tried, I knew it was bullshit when I tried a cannoli, and I'm like, what? In the oh, I mean, I'm I'm like, ha- I'm half Irish. I'm half Italian. I had a grandma who looked like Sophia from the Golden Girls, and she called tomato sauce gravy. Gravy. That's what she called it. (laughs) And um, all that happy jazz. So I grew up eating really good Italian. But it's like, you know, you're hungry and you get yourself a fucking um, bacon double cheeseburger or some shit at Wendy's. It's not the greatest fucking thing in the world, you know. But... It's good for what it is, and that's how I see the Olive Garden. It's it's the baconator of Italian food. I had a loaded taco, loaded taco burrito from Taco Bell today. Usually, I love the dollar burritos. I took a shot on these. You put watery lettuce in a burrito, burrito. I got a problem with you, okay? That shit was fucking ripe with nastiness. It's a. Uh, I I ain't gotta go deny about my Frito burrito. Uh, add sour cream from now on. I'll tell you right now, though, it's just uh, just tastes better. Fuck them, you know. Fucking fast food. It's all just he's a fucking mistress. I can't even get fucking fried rice in on it right now. I'm fucking upset, you know. Which is uh I miss my, my one Chinese spot that I used to love. God damn fucking COVID. I said I was gonna talk about it. Here we are, motherfucker. That's the thing. You cannot go without talking about it, okay? Especially if we're talking about things that piss us off, because that's pissing everybody off. It's pissing a fucking world off right now. But yeah, that's why shows like this are here. We're here to just mm. fucking entertain you for a little bit and talk about a couple shitty movies. So <laughs> there you go. We we got our beefs and out of the way. You, not, not to go to Olive Garden because that shit's fucking rank. Okay, don't don't go there, yeah. man. You know. I mean, if you're gonna go to Olive Garden, you might as well just like break down and go to some place like fucking Fazoli's. It's just as bad. Yeah, you know, some of us are not fortunate enough to have any other Italian place other than Olive Garden floating around here. <laughs> There's a place called Texas Corral. You get a chicken, chicken fried steak as big as the plate, and I, I ain't mad at that, man. You know, <laughs> it's like oh cholesterol, but it's so fucking good, man. It's so fucking good. Yeah, you know? I'll leave that alone, man. But we're here today. So glad to be here today. To talk about two films. We did a video game adaptation last time, but there was supposed to be a show in between this one. So sorry, but not sorry. 
This is this is the Dude Bro Show, and I'm happy to be here with these gentlemen. We're doing two films in which we have world class actors playing the cheesiest <laughs> of villains and doing it oh so well. We're doing Street Fighter from 1984, 1994, and Masters of the Universe from 1987. Oh, that can of goodness all over that fucking film, man. We're gonna do the one that, that I, I love them both. But we'll do Street Fighter first. We'll do them out of order because I I want to do it that way, and <laughs> we'll get into that right after the trailer. After seven months of fighting, the civil war in Shadaloo may have reached the turning point. The capital has just fallen. In December 1994, the forces of freedom will face a power-mad dictator in a struggle for the fate of the world. I don't think so. You have to do better than that. Okay. Now, who wants to go home and who wants to go with me? Street Fighter from 1994. Uh, your chief of plot synopsis is this. Colonel Guile and various other martial arts heroes fight against the tyranny of dictator M. Bison and his cohorts. Shadaloo City, Shadaloo. This, of course, stars uh, the muscles from Brussels playing an American soldier, uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, as Colonel Guile. Uh, I am an American <laughs> soldier. Call it not. What's it called? <laughs> he, he, he showed you real good when he, he flexed his muscle. You saw that flag sticking out. You know? <laughs> I'm American. What a woman. <laughs> <laughs> the man who fought stomach cancer, but he loved his children to be in this movie. And God bless him for it. Raul Julia as M. Bison. Ah, uh, he's my hero. Uh, Ming Na Wen as uh, Chun Li. Who else mm-hmm. do we have here? Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Kylie Minogue. Okay, she looks good in this movie. Let's this let's game. talk about it. When she gets in that blue top at the end, you're like, hey, Kylie. I I had to double like when I was watching the film. I had to go back and listen to her because I I swear she said, Colonel, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, what did you say? You know what? Sometimes I love to live with head cannon. So we just say she she said cunt. <laughs> When I think about her, I think about her in Biodome, when she's eating that carrot, and then you know it all goes away. You know, just it's uh, all my thoughts <laughs> in my head except for eating that carrot and beautiful. Nothing else in the world exists at that no, moment. Nothing else in the world exists. No, her eating that carrot and wearing those short shorts, but that's okay. Uh, oh, one of the character actors, Andrew Bynarski, who's a guy that I hate because of I fucking about- hate that piece yeah, of fuck shit. That guy. He's fuck a, he's you. A- Fuck you talking about Gunner Hansen. You can lick my balls. Hilariously yeah. plays Zangief in this movie, though. Uh, he's a, he's pretty funny. He's pretty fun in this movie, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Miguel Nunez shows up as DJ. Who else? Oh, this has to be a fake name, but he looks like Indian at all. Greg Rainwater shows up as a very small T-Hawk in this movie. <laughs> there are so many characters in this movie. Just so Who is characters. the Asian guy that could barely speak? In this film, who was that? I know he was famous. Uh, he was famous from where they're from. Tanaka, Japan. Or something like that. <laughs> yeah, Japan. Uh, he was he was one of Guile's guys, and he's like, "Oh, are we going to <laughs> fight Bison with?" But he's like that small Chinese guy in forces. Iron Man Three. He's like he's only there because. They're financing the movie, so like you gotta put this actor in here. <laughs> yeah, but if you notice during the film, whenever he had to speak, you know, he was mm-hmm. speaking Japanese, suddenly he's Captain fucking smooth and articulate like a son of a bitch, but you throw that English in there, he sounds like a fucking uh, window lick. 
<laughs> that was there's some bad accents in this movie. I, I gotta <laughs> mention West Studi, you know who you may know from mm. better things like Dancing Dancing with Wolves and mm. Geronimo. You know, world class actor playing Sagat, mm. who they make an eyeball joke about, which is fucking magical. But um. Mm. <laughs> Didn't see this coming. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is written and directed by Stephen E. D'Souza, who's given us many better, other better things, in, in my opinion. <laughs> Writer of 48 Hours, Commando. Holy shit. The Running Man, Die Hard. Wow. One and wow. two. Oh, wow. man. Ricochet. Hudson Hawk, even, I'll give you. Oh, man. You know. I'd rather watch Street uh, Fighter than Hudson Hawk. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, he, he, he wrote Judge Dredd as well, the original one from '95, though. So that's a uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I have fun with this stupid movie. You can fucking get started with the fucking bionic hillbillies in the desert. It's amazing, you know, the bionic hillbillies. <laughs> you also wrote yeah. Flintstones the movie. Yes, yes. Flintstones the movie. Yes. Which I don't hate. I have fun with it. But I'm going I'm to... Uh, Beverly Hills Cop 3. Uh, I kinda, Beverly Hills Cop 3, the black sheep of the Beverly Hills Cop uh, <laughs> series. Yeah. At the end of the day, there's only one really one really good one. I guess the second one. But I'm, I'm not going to be that guy and says that. But I'm going to be the guy that says that. And <laughs> the it. second... The, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is the second one... One and two are both fucking fantastic. I love them both. How could you not enjoy watching yeah. Eddie Murphy throw a guy over a cake and suddenly turn into a muscle man? How could you not fucking love that? There are better things as well. You ever see Wildcats before? Wildcats, yeah. There's yeah. seen the Wildcats where Woody Harrelson, young Woody Harrelson, goes for a pass and he turns into a black man magically when he catches the ball. He comes down. <laughs> <laughs> That's some ace editing right there. But speaking of ace editing in this film, I'm going to kick it to Philip Ooh. O'Neill first and ask him what he thinks of Street Fighter. Uh, well, I have to say, I, first of all, I have no relationship to the video game. Uh, I played Tekken as a kid. Uh, so that's the, that's the only fighting game I played. So I've seen this. I had, like, no, like, I went into this movie, like, no expectations. Like, uh, so I was just, like... I don't understand who these characters are. I don't know what this movie is about. I, I, uh, I got I to stop you because I'm so happy for you because of that reason. Because you had much more fun than we did, I'm sure. You know. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I was like slightly amused by this movie. But at some point, I don't know, my, my brain was sort of starting to collapse. Because this <laughs> there, is, there is no plot to this movie. And it's supposed to be like, because you know what the game is like? It's a fighting game, and they're like supposed to be really good at fighting, but I didn't see any good fighting <laughs> in this movie. I kept okay. There's no plot. I kept using good fights, and there are no good fights in this movie. I, I mean, don't what? know, man. The end of the movie, I think the fights got a little better. A little. Uh, better. You mean between uh, Van Damme and uh, the dying, oh. the dying Paul Julia? No, no, no. I enjoyed the sumo versus um, Russian oh. dude fight. I enjoyed that fight. Okay. Guy ripped off his shirt. He wasn't ashamed to let his titties fly. Good for him. <laughs> uh, them, them was... Fucking Godzilla noises, man. Come on now. You know? There you go. There you go. That's pure joy. <laughs> uh, I thought the, the stuff with Raw Julia was kind of fun. Uh, everything else just kind of a mess. It was all over the place. And... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just after fascinated by this thing uh, because it's just so strange and yeah, it's, just, it's very strange. And I was amazed that this movie was a box office hit. I thought it was like a flop or something, but no, it actually made a lot of money. It came out in theaters. Oh, Street Fighter was, Two was a huge thing at that time, man. Oh. It was it was almost as high as Cocaine was to John Claude Van Damme in this movie because. Uh... Oh, Van Damme! I, I love seeing like at the in the end credits. It's that. Van Damme's dialogue coach. <laughs> <laughs> that guy should have been fired. It's like here, speak Ama speak American, boy. <laughs> Hello, I'm Van Damme. You bastard bison. I was born in <laughs> Cleveland. I know you like to look at this. Like he'd look have to this. say he'd have to say like Howard the Duck. I was born in Cleveland. You know. <laughs> there are so many times during this movie I could not understand what he was saying. I could so after. She's like, no, don't do it. He says something like, 
if I'm knocked up down in 15 minutes or something, what did he say? <laughs> I I couldn't. Not, if I'm not out in 15 minutes, you roll out without me. Oh, you should That's have done before. <laughs> <laughs> His speech is also amazing. I must say that 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 speech he gives when. Oh, you've incredible. had speech, but he's like, they want us to go home. <laughs> <laughs> so who wants to come with me? And I'm not they, going home. <laughs> they want us to forget everything that they have done and just go home. Uh, now who wants to go home and they want to go with me? And everybody goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's talking, oh, he's, he's, he's talking yeah. to not Bob, I'm going to call him not Bob Belben, and says, what if next week he asks for 50 billion? Come on now. It's, it's uh... a... <laughs> Like 20 billion, which I, I read that this movie made like 20 billion yen in Japan or something. <laughs> 20 billion dollars. <laughs> also, he has the best comeback when he's in the, when the British guy is like, Kurt, have you lost your mind? And he goes, no, you lost your balls. <laughs> <laughs> For kids. You're ruining it, man. You're talking about all the high points of this film. <laughs> Those are, the, yeah, the best parts of this movie. <laughs> now, I, I have to say, though, that this is a the martial arts in this movie is shitty, and it's such a shitty mar- martial arts movie because the Asian character has a white stunt double. It's that bad. <laughs> mm. You can see I saw this, but like, wait a minute, the Asian character, you know that guy? I don't know, I don't know what his name is, the character, but he has a white stunt double. I can't believe <laughs> it's, it's Ryu. See, the Ryu. Kind of, the, like in the video game, they're kind of the same character, Philip. You, you got to remember. Uh. I mean, you you can't remember because you, you have no frame of reference to this. But the whole yeah. goal of this movie is for them to show up their 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 their, their fighting moves in the game. That's why mm-hmm. he, he does that same flip twice in a row, Colonel Guile, because it was uh-huh. a, it was a button mashing movie he would do with him. Uh, you know, I, I, <laughs> uh, I actually thought you know looking at the character the way the guy looks uh, when I looked up images of him, I actually thought Dolph Lundgren should have played this character because he looks more like the character in the game. You know. Maybe that would have been better. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> if I'm not done in 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, Raul Julia, it's a shame, yeah. The last movie. He, was, he gave it all in this movie. <laughs> man, oh, man. Cameron, how, how you feel, brother? What, what, what do you think? Uh, you know, I think I'm about on the same page. You know, the it, it wasn't a good movie. I remember... You, you know, being of the Street Fighter 2 crowd, <clears throat> I played that game like that and Mortal Kombat and Tekken, all those. And th- this was such a letdown. It was just, God, it was a lot of bad martial arts, like you said, just just a whole lot of not good editing, not good uh. optical effects and not good sound work, not good to, uh, pyro work the, the explosions were even kind of lame and I mean the really the standout part to, to me is Raul Julia he's the mm-hmm. one thing that adds a little bit of style and grace to the movie <laughs> he, he tried yeah I said look I looked at the, at the when I saw the credits and said cinematography by William A. Frick I was like what the guy who shot Rosemary's baby <laughs> I oh couldn't believe God. it I mean, everybody's got bills to pay, you know. Right, exactly. Yeah, but it was like, but it's like he must have been like I don't know, seventy years old or something when he's making this. Like, he's like, oh, I gotta work, I gotta work. Oh, Street Fighter in a movie. Yes. <laughs> well, that but, explains you know, why he looks so bad. He's seventy fucking years old. Yeah, that looks fine. <laughs> it's in focus. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know. It, it's you know I mean it's it's a it's a bit of fun. It's one of those like you know I think this is the kind of movie Ed Wood would have made if he was given thirty million dollars. <laughs> you know, or Albert Pune. Like, yeah, Albert Pune. You know I love Albert Pune, but uh, that's he would have he would have made a movie like this. But you know again, Raul Julia, he's so good in it. He's good with every he, he just chews everything up. And you, you compare speeches, you know, and he's given. His speech about, you know, they think I'm a madman. You know, <laughs> he can give a speech. He can take shit dialogue and still give a good speech because he has presence. And then you have Van Damme, <laughs> you know, who wants to come with me. It's like, you know, like, sorry. I'm like, do you have the eight ball? Okay, yeah, we're coming with you, John. You know, uh, it, mm. it's, yeah, it's just such such a letdown. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. It's a letdown on every level. 
Man. Although I will say Miguel Nunez is good with this his small part, you know, Mister Friday Five, Return of the Living Dead. He he lends some good uh, comedic timing to it. I, I enjoyed his part. He's the only realist of Shadowloo. He sees there's something wrong, very wrong. So it's uh... a. <laughs> yeah. And let me leave this. My closing note on this will be once again, uh, fuck Bernarski. <laughs> yeah, that fucking guy. Yeah, he's man. Ryan Lewis. Go ahead, man. I'm sorry. Well. Shit. Um, I'm going to start off by saying that I remember this film not being as horrible as it is. <laughs> I was, you know, I was a big Street Fighter 2 fan, fucking Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat. Those those were my games. All right. I don't remember exactly which version of Street Fighter 2 because there was 75 different versions of it. It could have been Turbo. Turbo, Turbo <laughs> Edition. Uh, what else? Right, right. Huge, huge. I, I'm pretty let down that in this movie nobody said Hadouken. Nobody said that at all, which which is troubling. Um, Raul Julia, like we talked about, Raul Julia fucking dying of stomach cancer. Literally, he was in terrible pain through this whole film. But uh, it was either I think it was his kids or something were huge Street Fighter fans. So we said, fuck it, I'm doing it. And so he did it, did it for that purpose, and he gave it his all. If you just want to watch this film and enjoy it, you watch Raul Julia's scenes. And then you'll be like, okay, he's hamming it up. He's having a good time. It's enjoyable. Van Damme. Okay, I, I from the shit that I heard, Van Damme wasn't even supposed to be the main character of this film. He kind of just like threw it out there and demanded that it, he would be the central, the central focus of the film. Also, I think that uh, the Dark Knight stole the whole Commissioner Gordon getting killed thing from this film, <laughs> which is troubling. <laughs> uh, a uh, fucking uh, Leatherface remake guy could suck a dick. Um, Change the channel. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bison's a bad guy? You got a hate? Kylie Minogue in this movie is tasty as fuck. Chung Lee, you know what? They they chose perfectly for her. She's great in this. Um, the green guy. What the fuck's his name again? Um, Blanca. Blanca. Who, who fucking Guile sold out in the beginning of the movie. I'm coming for you, Charlie. We're coming. You know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. uh, you know, the, the melodramatic, uh, I can't go on with with my life because I'm a green freak. So I'm just going to blow up here inside this facility with the doctor. You know, that that was a little fucking cheese. And how can you forget the end of the fucking th- this is the worst part of the fucking thing. Worst part <laughs> um, at the end of the movie. Well, everybody's celebrating. Everybody's having a good time for no fucked up reason. At the end of this thing, they all just jump and do their poses, their victory poses from the video game. <laughs> the, 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 the biggest, like cr- the biggest crime is they covered up Kylie Minogue's ass with that logo. That was the biggest crime for me. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Fucking yeah. Uh, all in all, you know, that's why it's on. There's moments to enjoy in this movie if you are a Street Fighter fan, but as a film, as a piece of fucking celluloid for you to watch, this movie's pretty fucking awful. Mm. There are some funny, I mean, you mentioned the quick change the channel line. There's some, I mean, there are some lines that are kind of funny. Like, the, for example, the famous one is, uh, uh, to me, for me, it was Tuesday. Like, there's some oh, little yeah. cute. Yeah. That whole That's monologue. He's, it's for just you, so this hard. was if this was the most important moment in your life to me. It was a Tuesday. I remember watching that yesterday and thinking, "That's a good line." It's, That's it's like so, the best it's, villain it's line. So, it's so effortless. Think about it. This was so great about it. You know, like here's this, you know, girl. You know, girl who I, I don't know how old she was supposed to be when her, because she was child or something. But she's like, you know, you destroyed my my family, my my village. And he's like. I don't remember any of that. <laughs> and <laughs> how could like, you? How day. could you not remember that? Just there you go. The day. It I, it's a, yeah. So Stephen E. D'Souza. I mean, it's amazing that this was actually he directed this movie, which is so strange because he's never directed anything before. Uh, this and he's give, that he's given this major, huge franchise to direct, uh, and it's and the fact is this is from a writer. And it's the movie has no plot really, <laughs> nothing. It's 
it's quite extraordinary. I, I guess it was supposed to be a comedy, this movie. That's I don't know. I have no this, idea if it's supposed to be a comedy. I don't think they knew. Well, it we seems like it because it's all these moments where, like, you know, you got paid, you know, <laughs> and, then, and like they cut to uh, what's the name of the guy from Return of the Dead? He's in this. Uh, Miguel Nunez. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Like there are moments where they cut to him and he's like supposed to be doing like some funny, you know, faces or something. So, I mean, uh, but then you also have these weird dark moments where like he's going to kill Blanca, you know. Sorry, Charlie, and he's gonna shoot him. <laughs> right. It, so. Well, we were riddled in this time period with movies like that. We were, you know, like Demolition Man and fucking right. s- stuff right. like that, where you know it had some serious dark moments, but then you know throw some comedy in the mix. So, you know, it's it's God bless the nineties. <laughs> then I read on the IMDb that apparently they had this movie was supposed to be like originally tended to be PG thirteen, then it got an R, and they had to cut it cut down all the fight scenes or something, the, the, the punches or something. So it could be for kids. So it was PG, which is so, that's, so, that's just such an American thing to do. It's so stupid because you're making a, a violent, you know, a movie where people hit each other and you're trying to trim it down. Well, oh, <laughs> shit. We couldn't even get a, a Mortal Kombat movie without it being oh, yeah. PG-13 or PG, it, whatever it, the fuck. It has, it has to be, you know, you know, some some sense of fantasy. Even we just got the Mortal Kombat film last show, and mm-hmm. th- this is a show. This is a movie where they had to take the plot to Enter the Dragon and throw it in the mix to give them some sort of plot. This mm-hmm. is just a like a film about a terrorist who takes hostages and people that come after them. There's there's, there's no history behind. You know, there should be a history behind behind Guile and, and Bison. Well, you know, like, you know what it is Tango I, before. I, yeah, but you know what it is. It's because uh, it was. Yeah, I read that it was. Uh, it was co-financed by Capcom. Yes. Uh, who, who got their money back actually from this? Even though you know all the fans were like, "This is nothing like the game," but Capcom are like, <laughs> "All the money." <laughs> so, it, it, what I think happened was Capcom was like, "Street Fighter is huge," which it, I guess it was at the time. Street Fighter is huge. Let's make a movie. And so they just they just throw all this money at the Americans. They're like, "Okay, uh, make a movie," and they get the okay. Steven the Sousa, who I guess likes the game, gets involved. And it's not a movie. They just make the, it's just a big product just to basically advertise the games, I think. Really? So there's no story. Like, there's no story because there's supposed to be any story. It's just a big, splashy, uh, every, you know, basically a giant, you know, a, a, what is it, two hours or something? Two hour long toy commercial in some yeah. ways. A live action toy commercial is really what it is. So it's not. I mean, a movie. it was basically a commercial for the next video game. I mean, because they put out okay. that movie version of the video game right afterwards. I remember it. That fucking game was broken. It was broken. <laughs> it was as broken as this fucking film. <laughs> Like so much so, I remember that in the arcade, I got excited about it. I was like, "Oh shit, that's Cl- Van Dam there. That's the actual people." And I played the thing, and it was the most fucking janky, twitchy thing in the world. And then it was like, it, it was like a step. It was like a step above Pit Fighter. Okay, With right. The- Right, and if I remember correctly, the home versions that came out were actually not broken. <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the Sega CD, yes, they were not as broken as the arcade game, yes. Yeah, so uh, so that's why there are all these characters in the film, because I'm sure the Japanese, you know, Capcom was like, you have to have this character, you have to have this character, because they're in the games. So that's why they're there. Everybody was in it, everybody was in it. But you, you got to see Zangief's pelt of a chest, the little, little hairy pelt of the chest. Didn't do the apology ever one time. I was waiting for it. Didn't happen. Uh, you know, I, right? I I at very least enjoyed the fact by the end of this movie when the final shit was going down, they were all wearing their exact outfits from the video <laughs> game. Thanks to Bison. Yes, thanks to Bison. Yeah. Yes, Bison gave them their, their proper uh, Bison gear, so they, they had the, the red and white geese from the video game. Blanca didn't, didn't use his fucking electricity powers one time. I was so sad, you know. Because mm. that was like, didn't do a thing. Yeah, he didn't fight at all. <laughs> and <laughs> what the fuck? They in that mo- in the movie they say that they're amplifying his muscle. Fucking eighty uh, percent. Lo- he looked the same <laughs> size. <laughs> I, his, hair, oh, I, his, his hair got bigger. Yeah, it certainly did, and redder. I, I love the announcer voice. The announcer voice in, in, in this movie is so funny. It's like, in a couple of minutes, this whole place is going to explode. It's, just, it's, the, <laughs> it's such a funny 50% muscle. <laughs> it's like, what, what is that voice? 
This is, this is like another voice, like a male voice who's like, welcome to Shaolulu City. <laughs> oh, God. Should have been Robert the, the, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, I said, there's some, after the quick change the channel, it, it, there's like a really strange edit where like, they show like the truck exploding, and then you hear Bison going, find Chan Li, and then they just cut to at his base, and they captured her already. Like, what? I was I had to, like, go back and go, wait, did I miss something? And I was like, no, they just jump, and they capture her already. That was so lame. I'm like, come on. What happened there? <laughs> One of my uh, favorite lines of the whole movie uh, is where Bison and E. Honda are captured, and they're whipping, uh, they're whipping poor E. Honda with, with the whip, and he's not feeling the thing. He's, like, picking his teeth and shit. And uh, the ball yeah. like, to, to escape makes, makes the line, come on, man, give me a hand. He's like, I'm not lonely to give me a week or something he says or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get jerked off by the sumo. Well, this is a PG movie, isn't it? You know, come on now. You know, it's a, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, well, also at the end of the movie when he's like, can we have that interview? And Van Damme goes, well, if you're going to have that dress on, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, fucking Van Damme was a big old perv in this fucking film in every way. <laughs> Everything about him. He couldn't even speak to a camera without talking to it like he was trying to fuck it. He was making these faces with everything, just posturing and posing and making fucking little eyebrow fucking leans and everything else. And the, throughout the whole thing, I'm like, he's a scumbag. Well, he had a relationship with Kylie Minogue behind the scenes actually oh did he lucky, yeah. lucky man lucky man you know while, while, while doing coke for like ten, what was it ten thousand dollars or something you gotta I read, stay up all night you know come on now yeah i read that actually fucked up the shooting they were like well, like that was just impossible to work it because of the cocaine and so yeah that sounds about right <laughs> Be like a action cut, cut, a cut man <laughs> in the boxing ring hey we, we need a cut action man here method. you know his nose is bleeding again <laughs> Give me a hmm? give me a tissue. I'm trying to talk to Bison. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. No, I did, the, the, the reason why this movie works is you gotta look at the track record until until Street Fighter. You had Bloodsport in '88, Kickboxer in '89, Cyborg in '89, Lionheart in '90, Death Warren in '90, Double Impact '91, Universal Soldier, a personal favorite in '92. Nowhere to Run in 93, Hard Target in 93, with Cajun Van Damme, which is, I love so much. Time Cop 94. Time Cop. Year, yes, Street Fighter 94. <laughs> and then the it, it gets, no, I can't say that, because I, I love Sudden Death with, with every inch of my soul. It's a great fucking movie. <laughs> but then you get the Quest in 96, and that just, like, turns, the, it's where it starts getting bad. Maximum Risk in 96. Double Team in 97, mm-hmm. Legionnaire in 98, mm-hmm. Knockoff in 98, Universal Soldier <laughs> the Return in 99. It just, it just oh, gets bad. God. It gets it's worse just, there. It, it's just like Albert Pune's career. It just gets worse and worse after the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, lo- I love this film you know, as, as, a, as a player of the video game, much like Ryan and I'm sure Cameron too. You know, you got to see a lot of stuff from the games. Like, it, it looked really terrible. I mean, what was the point of doing the flash of light fireball out of Ryu in this movie? It was so stupid looking. And well, right, and then they don't even like uh, acknowledge like, hey, uh, did he just like shoot an energy ball? Like we're gonna not, uh, you know what I mean? We're not gonna. Oh, they did uh, the same thing this. in Mortal Kombat. Last second, Liu Kang does the fucking double fist fireball thing into, into uh, yeah, but- Shang Tsung's chest, and you're like, where the fuck that come from? We're not gonna it- explain it, but it's the game. <laughs> at least, at least he's based on Bruce Lee, who who had the capability of doing a one inch punch and knocking somebody across the room. Okay, no, but. <laughs> Lightning, but but you could see fucking fire energy coming I know, out. Of his face. I know. <laughs> and then the fucking next movie turns into a fucking dragon, which is stupid looking too. You know, but I'm, I'm gonna leave that one alone, man. But um, yeah, it's show animal. another day, right? John Claude, man. John Claude Van Damme gonna use some animalities in this movie. Animalities, <laughs> <laughs> perhaps. You know, <laughs> it's, uh... I use them with Kylie. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no. I will finish her. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why you come, the reason why you come to watch this movie is not, you know, the the, the anything else except for Raul Julia because he brings some to this mm. turd that is unexplainable. I mean, he brings everything to this movie. The 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 the, the Tuesday speech is is notorious. <laughs> I just it's just him just saying this seriously. Everything is seriously, 
Except for, you know, the the the, the, the game, game over line. You know, <laughs> where he's using the video game to blow up the ship. And, you know, it's kind of hilarious. Um, also, I have to, I mean, give credit to an actor who can, who has this monologue, you know, where he's talking about this future he wants to create. And he has yes. this line. And it, this part of the monologue is so great. He goes, why do they still, they call me a warlord? And mad? All I want to do is to create the perfect genetic warrior. <laughs> and he says it so seriously and so sincere. I mean, uh, God bless them. I mean, <laughs> he's, he's looking at his That's bison amazing. map at some his bisonopolis map one, at one point, and he says, "We yeah. we did not we need to make more over here we, for all the free all the big franchises to want in." You know. <laughs> Also, the bison dollars. That's, oh, the bison that's dollars will, will buy you lots of things, yes. <laughs> uh, what he says, after I kidnapped the queen, he says? Yes. <laughs> I want to see that movie. What did yeah, we right. talk about was uh, the, the final fight between bison and, um, and, and, and Guile, because you, know, you get Guile just getting the upper hand until, of course, he knocks bison into a computer console. And uh, it, 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 he gets the uh, ge- genetic adrenaline pumped into him, and gets the power of lightning from his hands and rocket shoes. Uh, yeah, you gotta love the bloody boots. <laughs> Something wrong, Colonel. Yes. <laughs> the, wi- the wire work in this movie, but what do you call it? Van Damme does a jump kick, a, a gliding jump kick in this movie. To this bison. <laughs> when he comes out of the uh, comes out of that little... chamber, yeah, yeah. If people bitch about the the strings in Robocop three when he's flying across the ghetto, you should be really bitching about this, because <laughs> yeah. you know I've seen quality wire work and this is not quality wire work in a big Hollywood movie. And at this point, I didn't give a fuck because he was yeah. just doing all kinds of crazy stuff. It's like guys wearing this fucking hideous blue camo, takes it off to reveal the the, the flex, the, the flex of the American flag, but he's clearly not American, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, I love it. Bison- right. I'm sorry, go ahead. I love America. I am from <laughs> Delaware. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but my soul was born in the United States. <laughs> I gotta mention, both these films have a stinger scene that, so the movie's edited the, the same exact way, where the bad guy lives, but you don't get a sequel. <laughs> so, mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what they promised, but they never delivered. Yeah, I'm just, a lot of sim- uh, there are a lot of similarities between these two movies, actually. Yes. Uh, frankly, I'm just most disappointed that at the very end, Demon didn't k- take some uh, bison bucks and buy some angelados. <laughs> they did. They did get the bison bucks, but they were worthless because bison was defeated. You know, temporarily, because <laughs> he does he does punch his way out of that console at the end and say, "Would you like to start a new game or some shit like that?" And I forget what he what he clicks on, but it was um something outrageous. The, co- the computer just uh, no. The computer says, "Do you want to you know?" Start over, and then it's, then it's, it says "World Domination Replay." World domination, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I I, I, yeah. I love this stupid film. A lot of a lot of a lot of points we, we we touched upon already. You know, the humor of it is is there, and that's what that's the glue that keeps it together. That and that and Mr. Raul Julia, because that's what this podcast, that's what this this particular episode is all about. Is that one guy that could just hold this turn of a film and and hold it on his shoulders? And I, I think that both mm-hmm. these actors do a fine job and. Wes Studi, you know, and is 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 a uh, Sagat doesn't do that giant uppercut one time, but he's just standing like 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 I ain't, like I'm getting paid for this shit. I ain't got time for this shit. I'm just mm. gonna be, you know, say my lines and go home or something. But I forget uh, the, the oh, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, no, no, finish, please. Finish. Forget the actor that played Vega, but there's a scene <laughs> where Vega fights Ryu in the locker room, and he puts the mask on because I I don't <laughs> know why, just because he put it on the video game. That's the only reason why. <laughs> Which is the and then he gets his pretty face burned up and and whatever inferno was inside that fucking thing and of course yeah he takes it off then because you know Vega but um you uh, put it back on again go ahead I'm sorry go ahead Philip oh, yeah, I was gonna say this I I like to nominate this movie for having like perhaps the worst one liner I've ever heard in my life oh, and it's lit on us it's when um uh, wait, what's her name Shin Lu uh, <laughs> Uh, spits on what's the the white guy? What's his name? Ken. Ken. Yeah, and and he and he says, uh, "Careful, you'll dehydrate." I mean, <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> what is That's, like the worst line ever? Oh, god! So, yeah, really inconsistent. Because you go from that to like then the Tuesday line, which is 
Mm-hmm. Perhaps this movie would be better with a different director or something. I don't know. Maybe someone like who could direct action movies. You know, perhaps, mm-hmm. perhaps we'll never know now because we got the Albert. Albert, Albert Pugh should have done it. <laughs> Albert Pugh should have done it, man. Give give him a budget again so Van Damme can take over the production again. Come on, talk talking to you, Cyborg. You know. Oh, 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 oh! Also, there was no street fighting in this movie, so. <laughs> yes. Yeah, for a yes. movie called Street Fighter, there was like not one. There was a little bit of cage fighting. There was cage fighting, but there was absolutely not one bit of street fighting. I, I was trying <laughs> to get them to call it Mountain Fighter, but they wouldn't listen to me. <laughs> so I had some more cocaine and fucked Kylie in my trailer. <laughs> if I come, it's okay. I'm not a generous lover. <laughs> <laughs> I read that apparently they they approached Van Damme about doing the sequel, the the made the one that made actually later, the Rise of Chun Li, whatever. Oh, but he said no. <laughs> Neil, Neil McDonough, who's an actor I love to love, plays Bison in that movie, and it's just awful. Uh, it's if, it's on, if it's on TV, say change the channel. <laughs> yes, it's it's him as Bison and the girl. I uh, was mentioned Smallville the beginning of the show. Kristen Kruk, who plays Lana Lang on Smallville, is the Chun Li role in that movie. Mm-hmm. Isn't the guy from Mortal Kombat in that movie? I don't, I don't remember. But it's yeah. got Chris. It's got Chris Klein as the tough talking detective, who's an actor I hate as well. You know. Wait, wait, wait! Like American Pie. American dude? Pie, Chris Klein. Yes. Uh, I'm glad I never watched that thing. That's <laughs> watch this. Like, yeah, stop making me feel bad for Chris Klein. He's a terrible actor. Okay, come on now. It's a. You know, they put they put him as a villain on the Flash, and I was like, "Don't make me feel bad for Chris Klein. What's wrong with you, fucking people? <laughs> you know? Oh my God! Street Fighter is all kicking to Philip again. And any final things you'd like to say about him? What do you give it one to ten? Uh, I give it uh, one to ten. Uh, <laughs> two out of ten? Uh, I don't know. It, it, this movie is a mess. It really is. It, it, it's like there are moments a little fun stuff with Raul Julia in this giant piece of shit but yeah I don't know this is nothing I would never recommend this movie to anybody just watch on YouTube just watch Raul Julia's scenes on YouTube oh man they they are they are wonderful Cameron uh yeah it's uh, about as bad as I remember it <clears throat> probably a little bit worse uh, yeah I can't rate it too high I give it a three out of ten I got nearly too many other th- thoughts on it that it, other than Raul Julia is pretty much a letdown from the beginning to end. Uh, Ryan, I find this film to be a drinking film. <laughs> I, I'm not going to say I recommend this to anybody because, frankly, I'm not sure how many times I'm ever going to watch this again. But I'm just dumb enough to possibly put it on because I get some kind of joy out of it occasionally. Uh, this film it has Ronald Julio which is a fucking winner watching Van Damme just fucking coke his way through it is kind of amusing <laughs> and uh, <laughs> fucking uh, Kylie Minogue in that blue top uh, I wouldn't give this thing anything more than a three because frankly it doesn't deserve that but um, it has its it has its moments that makes it slightly enjoyable so what do you got for us Gary I'm going to give this film two ratings, okay? I'm going to give it the technical rating, which is like a four, three and a half to a four, which is well-deserving because the film lacks any plot whatsoever. But, you know, like the drunk factor, like the fun factor, if I had like three guys in the room watching it with me, this would get easily a six because it's, it's, it's that kind of fun, <laughs> that kind of stupid because you could be watching and comment all the all the weird stuff for for no reason that happens with your friend with it, with the, in the movie and... So if a three point five and, and a six for for the fun the fun watch the non technical watch so that's and, uh, and as far as me Jean Claude Van Damme I'd give this movie a ten because I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> I love the addition of Mr. Van Damme to this program. It's got to be a thing all the time, you know. And it's, cocaine it's, is a hell of a drug. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. This is so much fun, guys. Um, let's keep the good times rolling. When we come back, we're, we're going to talk about uh, <laughs> bemulleted heroes that are always He-Man and uh, the serious lack of masters, but the serious fullness of Langella and the canon epic, I, I dare say. Epic! Masters of the Universe of 1987. 
right after the trailer. At the far end of the universe, there is a planet ruled by a being of utter evil. And there is only one man who dares challenge him. They are locked in a battle to the death. A battle that will take them across the heavens. Stop him! A battle that will finally be fought. I want them to get down and brought to me! Across the face. Police! Nobody move! Of Earth. I think I'm gonna need some backup. Can you show us the way? Of course. No! distant galaxy, they have come to Earth. Dolph Lundgren as He-Man, Frank Langella as Skeletor. Only they have the powers to be. Masters of the Universe, live the adventure. Masters of the Universe, from Canada, of course, from 1987. I have the power! No, 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 it's, I have the power. <laughs> so good. I don't you can really hear it over the, 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 the bombastic Bill Conti score that I love in this fucking movie, you know, it's, uh, oh my gosh, the heroic warrior He-Man battles against the evil Lord Skeletor and his armies of darkness to con- for control of Castle Grayskull and planet Earth, apparently. This is, uh, stars Dolph Lundgren as He-Man, not Prince Adam, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Frank Langella as Skeletor. The the piercing eyes of Meg Foster as Evelyn. Um Billy Barty is Gwilder. Welcome to the show, Billy Barty. What's uh, up? Yeah. Man? yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Courtney Cox as Julie Winston, Robert Duncan Mc- McNeil as Kevin Corrigan, John Cypher as Man at Arms, the great Chelsea Field I know from Death Spa as Tila, uh James Tolkien as Detective Lubick. Mother and P- yes. Lubick. Lubick is amazing. Mr. Strickland. Yes. As your very old sorceress for some reason. She doesn't fly or anything, people. Not at all. (laughs) And the star of the film, Anthony DeLongis as Blade, who, if you looked at his credits, he's a sword master, a horse master. He has has many (laughs) masteries that I have to admire in a man. uh, But but is he a master of the universe? Oh, uh, definitely. Mm, Definitely, mm, man. mm. (laughs) I've been waiting for this for a long time. You know, it's a... (laughs) <laughs> Director, directed by Gary Goddard, who I have to admire because he was in some shit to make this fucking movie and make it what it is. And mm. um, I'm going to kick it to my friend Ryan, who was so excited to do this show. So I'm going to ask him first. Mm. Real big now. What do you think of the Masters <coughs> Universe movie, man? No, I'm going to tell you a little something about myself. I remember when I was a child, a wee Ryan, I had a Masters of the Universe alarm clock. Now, this thing was blue, and it had, like, scenes from the cartoon with them beating each other up on it. And when it went off every day, it said, it's time to wake up, smile and be happy, brush your teeth and make it snappy. We know what it feels like when we wake up first, because we are the masters of the universe. And then He-Man said, I have the power. I'm a He-Man geek. (laughs) <laughs> and, this, and this movie when it came out it fucking rocked my planet <laughs> all right it really did i'm not gonna lie about it i'm a huge star wars geek and i was i was missing star wars and i needed more of it and this film came out and suddenly fucking the dude from rocky four was e-man and frank <laughs> langella is fucking amazing as skeletor and evil lynn has eyes i just want to fuck because they look so good and everything else and <laughs> This film, you know, it did something to me. Gwildor became like a massive fan of me, and I'm going to admit it's not good. It's not good. (laughs) 
it's not a good film, but to me, it's like this mishmash of fucking things that were popular at the time with He-Man thrown into the mix. And yeah, you mentioned the sorceress, the sorceress. She doesn't have any feathers for some reason. Everything's made out of icicles on her, which is weird. And Tila, I, I don't know. She looked good in that gray suit and you could tell she wanted to fuck He-Man because she got real upset when fucking uh, <laughs> Courtney Cox showed up real quick. <laughs> <laughs> but Frank Langella, he said – in talking about his career, and he's played Dracula. He's played so many fucking things and he's an amazing actor. His favorite role he ever played was Skeletor. <laughs> it was another one of those things he did it for his kids. But he said that he got to play this pure operatic bad guy. And I agree with him. He is so good in this film. I, this whole film, you could turn it on and it could just be a pile of shit sitting there on a sidewalk, getting steamy with flies around it for two hours. And at the end, every Frank Langella scene came on and it's a good film. Hmm. And I'll another, another movie where that's saved by the villain. That sounds familiar. What is it? It's trend you know? But I will argue that it was saved more in this film. Oh, yeah. Man, oh, man. Philip, what about you, sir? Oh, uh, I saw this movie on TV many, 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 many years ago. I knew of He-Man. I never watched the original cartoon, I think. I do remember seeing that cartoon. It was like from 2002 or something. Which uh, was awesome. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. It was pro- I think that, yeah, I think I liked it as well. Um, so I went into this movie... I, I didn't know anything about it. And I don't remember what my reaction was at the time. Watching it again, it's uh, it's uh, definitely a movie that uh, <laughs> it, it's all about Frank, yeah, Frank Langella. It really is. Because at some point in this movie, as I was watching okay. it again, I was like, come on, get to Frank Langella. Come on, come on. I was getting a little restless with some of these scenes between uh, what is it, Dolph Lundgren and uh, Courtney Cox and all that. Um I have to say, this, these two movies, we just Street Fighter and this, this is a pretty good, uh, what do you say, double feature, I guess. Because here are both movies based on a franchise, and uh, the production, the movie in the end is a disaster that's saved by the actor playing the bad guy. Uh, I have to say, though, I think this movie should have had Street Fighter's budget, because, boy, you could have needed a, <laughs> a bigger budget here. Uh, because this world of, uh, of Eternia, we don't get it all. Which I would say that's a disappointment. Um, but whereas the Street Fighter movie was like this, you know, embodies the early '90s in that worst kind of way. Uh, you know, the, this one at least embodies the late '80s in a very funny way. You know, that very colorful, everything is pink, and it's all over. You know, ex- exaggerated characters and um, and it's. I mean, you can tell they have no money really here you know it's like you're watching these action scenes and it's a lot of it is like giant close-ups of Dolph Lundgren's chest most of the time <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah it's a very strangely shot film uh, where the action is not very good uh, but Frank Yala is chewing the scenery so wonderfully here I mean he's treating this like it's Shakespeare and that is amazing to watch he's he's a perfect cartoon villain here and uh, he makes the film, really does. He really does. Uh, everything else is kind of, it's not really good, but it's so 80s. And it has a charm to it, which the Street Fighter movie does not have. And so I kind of liked it, even though it's very, very flawed. And I've got some problems with it. I do. Um, so, uh, yeah, I got to say, uh, Frank Langella. I gotta give it to him dude that speech that he has when he finally gets the power and right when he's about to become (laughs) God Skeletor and he says the universe flows flows through me and he just starts screaming about having power and everything else you're just like this is so good (laughs) the alpha and the omega like this is better than Thanos and Palpatine this is better than all right right I have that power (laughs) <laughs> we don't get those villains anymore. We just don't. Uh, I, I must say also, he has some great lines. One of my, my favorite lines from, from Angela is, is something that I say a lot to people who are 
whenever I meet someone who's like, um, who's in a hurry and like just has to get something done quickly, I always quote Franklin Jello when he says, everything comes to he who waits. <laughs> I just love that line. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. I find this movie extremely quotable. It's very mm. quotable. Mm. It is pretty, uh, it's pretty quotable. Good journey. <laughs> Boy, they thought that was gonna, you know, become the next uh, May the Force Be With You, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, they were going for that big time. I mm. found myself, and it's interesting. Uh, two weeks ago, and this was before I even talked to Gary about doing this movie, and I, <laughs> I, uh, I was doing the dishes, and my wife said, uh, "You're doing the dishes." Wow, thank you. And I just looked at her, looked over my shoulder, and I said, I don't want innocent people to die. <laughs> and, and, uh, it's just one of those things, man. There's something about this movie. <laughs> it's fair. It, you know, I'll give this movie, I have to say, this movie has a good, a good spirit to it. Like, it really wants to be, uh, I mean, you can feel they're really trying, at least, here. You know, and uh, it wants to be, char- you know, it tries to be charming. It wants to be something more than just, uh, I don't know what Street Fighter was supposed to be. But that, but this movie, you know, it has a spirit to it. So, uh, you know. Street Fighter, uh, that, that was supposed to be a cash grab, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, well, yeah. And, uh, uh, but the funny thing about this movie is what it reminds me of. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of Star Wars to it. <laughs> a little bit. But all the lasers and the. Black stormtroopers, black, black stormtroopers shooting yeah. laser beams and hoverboards that are make sounds of the speeders. Yes, but it reminded me more of like Conan the Barbarian, like Hercules with Lou Ferrigno, like all those movies. You know, Beastmaster. I kept thinking about those movies. It's like this feels like more like this movie really wants to be one of those big muscle. You know, especially at the end when he pushes that giant uh, <laughs> statue that goes boing when it's. it's the floor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I couldn't yeah. even think about yeah. those movies. Like he, at some point, she should he should have thrown like a giant bear into outer space. Like what was it? <laughs> it reminded me of that. So yeah, poor Dolph, my fellow Swede. Uh, I think he's pretty embarrassed by this movie. Like of all the movies he's done, this is the one he doesn't want to talk about. I think. Uh, he's got a lot to fall back on, though, Philip. He's a very intelligent man. Yeah, he's a very intelligent man. <laughs> I think out of all his movies, this is the one. This is the one I find to be the most memorable of all the films he's ever made. And I've seen pretty much every fucking movie he's been in because I'm a fan. But for this is the one when I think of Dolph Lundgren, I think of fucking him running around with his mullet wearing a He-Man fucking harness. No, <laughs> that was until I saw Universal Soldier and I just like my mind went in a whole different way because, you know, I think about Universal Soldier and ham it up in that fucking movie. I love it so much, too. But, you know, here we are. Yeah. You got, you got, you got, you got. You got by the way, at the end of that one line where he says, "You know, good things come to those who wait," you got to add the end of the line, the real, the real exclamation point. And I have waited so <laughs> very long for this, you know. Right, yeah. right. It's Dude, just... so weird watching him and Dolph Lundgren act together because it's like antimatter and matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, it says that nah, so long, and then cut to Dolph Lundgren going. Let her go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you watch the Electric Boogaloo doc, um, somebody said, I, I think, I forget what they're in context of this film, where mm. Stallone came on set during the stither, because he was working with Canada Time doing Cobra and fucking uh, Over the Top and stuff, so he come on set, and he stared at the director and said, you gave this guy lines? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, he didn't yeah, hardly rock. speak English at the time, right? I mean, uh, as far as I remembered, he was still learning English mm. at the time. Yeah, they mm. said the first the first go around of recording this thing and fucking – they were playing back dailies and they were like, I don't know what the fuck he's saying at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was a um, – on the this 10-minute documentary that's on YouTube, uh, <laughs> this, I think it was a guy at, Matt, at the toy company who said – uh, I listened to Dolph Lundgren's voice, and uh, I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> and the director then was like, you know, they got some guy in to come and dub over Lundgren. And apparently this guy did a really good job, like, mimicking – like, it sounded like Dolph, but it was, like, perfect speech, you know. Intelligible. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but then the canon guy's like, no, 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 we got to keep the Dolph. Dolph Lundgren is the star. <laughs> right, and Dolph promised. He said, "Give me one more chance, just one." And and, and then it was clear enough, so they let him have. 
Yeah, boy. I mean, I mean, the, some of the creatures actually look not. They look pretty good. Actually, I mean, that, that little lizard thing. I like the lizard guy. Yeah, so, yeah that kind of looked cool. Uh, so Sarad was the character's name. I think his name was like Sarad or something like that. Yeah, so you can see like okay, it's it, it could have been oh if they only had more money they could have really made something more here, uh, and, and they, they they had they had discount old lady Karg who looked like an old woman you know with that that mask on his face and stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah and Eternia I mean God why did they go to the eighties you know the city did of they, didn't uh, they film that in like the Vasquez Rock area where the original Bat Cave was and that's all they had of Eternia. Yeah, yeah, and actually, when I looked at the movie now, you know, there's this opening. You see the gray skull, uh, uh, the castle, and there's the this shot. Painting. Yeah, the map thing, and there's a shot of the um, the sorceress uh, from behind her, and you can see this giant city. If you look close right. in the in, oh. right, but then in, in the movie, the rest of the movie, there's no city. It's all just mountain. <laughs> what happened to the city? <laughs> mm, budget. <laughs> yeah, vanished with the budget. Uh, so yeah, the budget just start. Apparently, they had a you know money from from the toy company. Then they run out of that money, and then of course, Canon would not put up any more money, <laughs> even though they were supposed to. So yeah, they had virtually no money when they made this film, and that's why if you get to the end of the fight scene, you know the fight scene when they fight uh, Dolph and um, Skeletor, uh, there, there was like only the director, I think the camera guy, and, and Dolph and the stuntman, a Skeletor, and they just shot that for a day. Yeah, they had a spinning lamp, and um, <laughs> Dolph Lundgren and him, they shot real quick, as quick as they can, because they had no ending. There was literally yeah. no ending. Oh, and that, and the director said that the, the canon guys are like, told, he said to him, we don't have an, end, an ending. And the canon guy said, it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll fight, and then we'll fade out to black. <laughs> <laughs> what? It'll all be all right. Fix it in post. Yeah. It'll be to be continued. We'll do a sequel. <laughs> uh, which turned into Cyborg. A Repune movie. Yes. yes. Another yes. Albert Repune movie. <laughs> so when you watch Cyborg, look at all those little backdrops. Just think, that could have been He-Man running around there. Yep. <laughs> oh, Cameron, man. kick it to you, brother. Uh, you know... I love this movie. Uh, I, I I love it for every th- every bad reason, every good reason. But you know, I was a Masters of the Universe kid. I had all the cartoons. I had all the action figures. You know, I was chomping at the bit as a what ten or eleven year old waiting for this to come out. Preach it, brother. But you know, at the same at the same time, I remember not getting it when it came out because I was just like, "This isn't like the cartoon." It wasn't <laughs> until probably four or five years later, rediscovering it on on VHS, you know, on home video, that I started to love it. It's it's canon, and you know, especially in retrospect, knowing what I know now as an adult, you know, when you just see canon's name up there, you know it's going to be fun. It may not be good, but you know it's <laughs> going to be fun. And, and that's that, that's what, what the difference between this and Street Fighter is. The biggest difference, uh, Street Fighter was an attempt at fun that failed, but this movie was actually really fun. Even if, you know, and it kind of slows down a little bit when you're on Earth and not Eternia yet for me a little bit. But you know, the the creatures are good. The, the pseudo Star Trek slash Star Wars technology is pretty cool. Uh, you know, people say I've heard people say that nobody should ever need to play a a live action uh, He Man in the Masters of the Universe because <laughs> the perfect one doesn't a gift. I give you fucking Dolph Lundgren. He still was the perfect. He may not have been. Uh, he might not have been able to put, play pr- the prince, but he could definitely play uh, He Man. Uh, okay. You know, I'm le- left with so many thoughts after watching this. Like Billy Barty is Gwildor. He's just great. When he's eating ribs and he's just like, he all of a sudden realizes they're, you know, like, oh, this is an animal, animal, you know, and they're like, nah, it tasted good. Man. It, like, tasted it tasted good. good. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was he anyway? I forgot. I, I he, he was, was Harry Knowles. He was their take on Orko because they couldn't figure out how to make Orko float. So instead they made him stand and took the fucking uh, curtain off him. And there you go. <laughs> that was pretty much. Uh, and uh, James... Uh, he, he, he was a Thanorian, okay? Get it right. Come on, y'all. You know, it's, uh... <laughs> Our fellow uh, podcaster, John Cross, I, I love it. He pointed out uh, that, like, why did they spend all this money 
on his makeup, on this this hideous makeup on the on Billy Barty. I mean, you know, Orko, like put a cloak over his head, you know, dark in the face, with, you know, like why did they didn't they do that? Yeah, you know? they just could not figure out how to make him flying, and that's why they did that. Yeah, the original scripts, all of this was Orko, and there was no cosmic key. It was him doing a magic thing, and then it opened up a portal, and then fucking Skeletor found a way to use it. Is that but the also, of a show where Orko doing magic and fucking it up, right? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, but also, it. wasn't it like the toy company wanted to like create new characters and sell? More toys or something? Was that yeah, it? well, something? A- after they couldn't figure out how it worked, they brought their concerns up there and they were like, well, just make a new character. We'll, we'll you know, we'll call them this and then we could sell toys. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I, I, you know, and I got to agree with that. Uh, Frank Langella, he, he's he's gold in it. He chews it up when he first shows up as Skeletor and he's just walking <laughs> around with his big staff. Boom, boom. <laughs> he's just got presence, man. He, you know, uh, and he's got just the best fucking lines. I, I love the line. Uh, I'm not even going to try to. Uh, imitate it because I'll, I'll just call this butcher it but he's like tell me about the loneliness of, loneliness of good he man is it equal to the loneliness of evil just <laughs> great lines you know orwellian shakespearean just oh so I think he quotes, does, he, doesn't he quote shakespeare at some point when he says uh i'm not in a giving vein this day yes <laughs> yeah yeah he's close that dude i love that line he has when he's like i must possess everything or i have nothing <laughs> yeah. App- apparently yeah. he he rewrote this his dialogue all of it he rewrote yeah. every line of his dialogue and thank, thank fucking god he god did, he did. <laughs> yeah and he, tell, he, he tells a story, uh, if you guys haven't watched it, uh, listeners, and Ryan, I'm talking to you, uh, by the power of Grace Call documentary, The Definitive History of Masters of the Universe mm. uh, documentary, currently, currently running on Netflix, uh, in case you get on that. It's tonight, you know. tonight it's happening. <laughs> uh, I looked up who uh, wrote the screenplay for this movie, and it was the guy who wrote The Dark Crystal? Yep. Yeah, and, oh, Supergirl, ooh. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> again so, those things are i could forgive because i got helen slater in those thigh high boots and that little skirt mm-hmm. so i could forgive yeah. 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 i wonder how the original script for this looked like it was like all eternity out because i i know that was changed because of budgets just well they have much more masters i heard i mean you know, we, again you don't have trap jaw you don't have ram man you don't have stratos you don't have mechanic you don't have any of these people in this movie no, no battle budget, cat. No battle cat. No, no, for budgetary reasons, you know. And oh. that's how the show. It's it's canon film. You got you got to take that with a grain of salt, though. It, uh, can you ima- can you imagine Dolph Lundgren riding a giant stop motion? <laughs> Oh, he, does ride, he, do, he does ride a seahorse with with long ginger hair in the Aquaman movie. So that's true. Uh, that's true. Uh, we'll try uh, to forgive him. For that. I la- I laugh at some of the effects movie. I mean, I mean, at some point when He Man comes down and grabs this thing from uh, Evil Lynn. There's this shot of He-Man on this uh, flying skateboard thing, and it's oh, yeah. clearly an action figure flying away. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this came out when I was six, and I just did not care at that point. It was oh. amazing to watch. <laughs> I watched well, I watched uh, a, some sort of Blu-ray copy, so you know the quality was too good. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and then uh, yeah. Speaking of effects, you know, he when he becomes uh, the master of the universe, he gets a gold suit, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's pretty much it. And he gets yeah. the ability to he gets a gold suit and the ability to shoot fucking lightning bolts out of his eyeballs. They just yeah. forget like plot of the original show, you know, because he's not He Man all the time. He has to hold aloft his magic sword for po- all the elders of the Eternia to have the power to become He-Man. Well, he yeah. does that. I'll argue he does that at the end. And yeah, on he's, top he's... of that, I consider this is the end of the show. The show existed. The show happened. All that shit happened. And then suddenly Skeletor fucking fucked things up. And he killed off all the other masters and he took over Eternia and he took Grey Skull and he fucking captured the sorceress and everything else. So why the fuck change back to Adam at that point? You are he man the whole time and you're trying to fucking win a rebellion against him. Mm. Uh, Damn, you should have written that movie. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, oh, I, I think I would have much rather is, is seen that version of the Masters of the Universe movie. Yeah, once again, head cannon, man. That's where it's at for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh hell. I, I, I got to talk about. I'm sorry. I was gonna say in the in the end, uh, you know, Franklin Jill is great. Uh, Meg Foster is awesome. Those eyes. Uh, that's mm-hmm. all I can think about when I see her. Those eyes. And uh, James uh, Tolkien. He's always and forever going to be Mr. Strickland <laughs> to me. Yeah, yeah but or- he, he's. He's great at this, as the detective, but he's just an extension as, of Mr. Strickland. No, but he's that character in everything he's ever done, yeah, he's, and yeah. I'm I'm glad for it because he could be a fucking snarky asshole, and I love it. Yeah, he's a lot of fun. He, he to me, he's like the American Donald Pleasance because he just yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I shot him six times. <laughs> oh, can you ma- oh can you imagine him in Halloween? When I I, ch- I shot him six times, he should have been dead. Where where's the body? <laughs> oh my gosh yeah me i mean people talk you know badly like oh it's, it's a shit movie you know he man doesn't do this he man doesn't do that it's like you know you gotta you gotta recognize the the goodness in me which you know tops is langella music by bill conti who gave us you know the rocky music and the karate kid music and so many other great uh you know soundtracks um, visual effects by by Richard Edlund, Edlund, who gave us Ghostbusters and Fright Night and all kinds of other good stuff. Production design by William Stout, who gave us so many great things. And you, if you've seen the the, the the drawings that he originally did, another another thing where this movie was neutered by like parents groups because He Man couldn't kill anybody, much like on the cartoon show. He Man wasn't allowed to kill anybody. Mm-hmm. He Man was only allowed to punch things and like even off camera punch things. Yeah, you know? isn't that so, what made it all I'm robots? Sorry. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. so if you wanted like a bloody he movie, you were you weren't gonna get it again because of parents' troops. Again, watch that documentary, it's fucking wonderful. Um that's why she that's why She sucks so bad, because of parents groups. Um mm. and um yeah, it's 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 really fun to me. And I, I, I love I love the costumes. The costumes are great, which <laughs> I hear that, you know, Evil Lynn's costume like chafed into her, her crotch area and her boob area, but you know what, she she toughed it out, she used it in in, in her performance. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. And, <laughs> ah, there she is, the native girl. I love it so much, you know. Uh, I, I like, I like what you mentioned the uh, censorship thing. Because mm-hmm. uh, in this documentary I watched, uh, the, the director talks about that how the first they were like, you know, he man can't kill anybody and all that, and then like a couple of weeks into the shoot, they they get to him and like, oh no god, the toy sales are doing really badly. And you gotta do something. He's like, "Why don't you tell me I can't do any action scenes?" And he's and they said to him, "We don't care. We don't care. Just have him rape, kill, blood, gore, everything." Just... <laughs> oh, that that sounds like that sounds like Manaham Golan to me, man. You know, just talking that shit. Right. Yeah. So you know, you could have had a rape scene with Courtney Cox or with Dolph Lundgren. Huh? Oh no. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. easily the worst part of the movie, you know. But they were essential, I guess, to be their guides on Earth. If you want to, call I that. like Courtney Cox in his movie. I will fight for that, dude. I find her completely adorable in this film, mm-hmm. and her boyfriend, fucking, I think he's great. You make them for me. I completely, you know, don't want anything bad to happen to either one of them. I want well, them to she, be okay. At, at least she she wasn't like docile. At least she kind of fought for her own every once in a while. Even though she was a fucking idiot and gave the goddamn key to Evil Lynn. That... It's a classic, classic, you know, move, you know. Makes it look like dead parent and then she can give you what you want, you know. Well, and they were likable characters. They they weren't like, you know, so many characters like that that are just supreme douchebags. They were likable. You cared whether or not they were going to make it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah Courtney I, Cox. I'm oh, sorry. Courtney Cox is, yeah, she's a uh, real cutie here. Uh, she's so different from the Courtney Cox who became later because he became kind of. She still got her. She still got her dancing. In the she's dark dancing too, in the dark, dude. Yep. <laughs> uh, this wasn't uh, her only canon film. She did another canon film at the same time, actually, uh, an Albert Pugh movie. I can't remember what it was called. I think oh, Down God. Down Twisted. But it shows she uh, started started with canon. Um, yeah, I, I love the uh, <laughs> one thing I noticed at the end uh, when she wakes when they uh, what is it they they. She's brought back to the, she's brought to the past or something. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, somebody point, pointed this out. I can't remember who, who who it was. If you look in the room, you can see apparently a giant pink dildo. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
now, now I have to go back and look. I have watched, yeah, I got to look for that too. Five hundred times, and I have never seen a big dildo. Now I'm gonna have to watch that. She she gets stuff from the bed. She looks, and then we get this POV shot of the camera going through the room, and it's, <laughs> as the shot is about to is about to cut to her again, you can see like this big giant pink thing <laughs> in the background. I mean, from I was the, like, what? That's from, that? the, that's from the cut rape scene. So clearly, uh, <laughs> Ryan or whatever her boyfriend name was didn't satisfy her. So, <laughs> so that's why she's she just gonna leave. She was like, "I don't need you. Why she it up. I can't stay here anymore." Me and my Bing Zildo are going. Speaking of folks who are oozing with repressed sexuality, and there's little stuff you notice when you watch it as an adult that you didn't notice when you were watching it as a kid, like how much Blade wanted to fuck He Man in the worst way. Yeah, dude, he just had a total man boner for him. <laughs> Right down, right down to the sadomasochistic whipping scene. You know, <laughs> he was enjoying that shit a little too much, man. There was also oh some weird stuff going on between uh, Skeletor and Evil Lynn. Well, that was oh, she, she was that, that submissive, you know. Yeah, totally, dude. Fucking, you notice when all the other guys came? Fucking, they they did a quick spin and shit. You know, <laughs> like oh, nothing was happening here. Another ten <laughs> minutes, his fucking bony dick would have been in her mouth. <laughs> that's that's that's, oh, that's right. That's that right, sorceress. You watch. watch. You watch. <laughs> Evelyn, look into my eyes. <laughs> sorceress, eye contact. Eye contact, sorceress. You know. <laughs> you, you you're not the cook we want, but you're the cook we deserve. You know. You want this, don't you? <laughs> Wait, Van Damme's back. Oh shit. Yes, I was almost in this movie, but they told me no cocaine budget, so I was gone. <laughs> so I did the sequel. No, no it's great. it's great though. You get, you get, you get like the scene. Like I, I posted on Facebook the the scene where he comes up on like the video skyboard or whatever. You can see his image throughout the sky of Eternia. <laughs> that long shot of that and He-Man just standing there is pretty amazing looking. And um, <laughs> the whole where he gets the sword out of the thing, the whole I have the power, fucking he's got the, 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 the Alpha and the Omega mojo at this point. He's hitting him with the <laughs> lightning and that looks really good. I didn't mention Beast Man, but I love the snarling Beast Man in this movie. Yes, movie. yes. <laughs> Just, just, just smacking that guy in the dome. That guy flies across the room. I love it so much. You know, uh, uh. I like the. I thought it was kind of cool how when they um, they transport them. Uh, well, no, they go into they 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 go to Eternia at the end. You know, with the pink pa- Cadillac, and you see like half the Cadillac and half the walls with them. I thought that was kind of cool. Cool detail. Yeah, I like that shit too. It made me think of that fucking TV show, My Two Dads. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 oh. Sorry, what was up with the uh, at the end there? Um, uh, Donald Pleasance. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he gets like a girlfriend. Yeah, he got, he, he got himself some harm women. He got he got to be a pirate attorney. Oh, man. dude, you know? listen, but he's a like... cop. He knows how to fucking talk smooth and shit. He's got a big ass shotgun, and he's from a different world. That blonde wanted him. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so weird. You've never seen that character before. It was like. Usually they like establish these characters like before or something, you know. Maybe they could have had him and like Tegla or something. Because it's like I was like, who is that blonde? Who is dude? That? If the fucking <laughs> principal from Back to the Future got with Tila, I would have been very upset. Well, I don't know. It's just it was just weird. Like, hey, I got my own play. I got a castle. I got a blonde bimbo right here. I'm gonna be fine. <laughs> he's, just, he's gonna retire, man. And apparently he gets to stay in the castle. That's something I don't understand. I get the power now. <laughs> Lubick, Lubick now, just goes home. He's got he's got that fucking Swanson's chicken dinner waiting for him. <laughs> What's he got to look forward to, man? Right. He's got he got himself some hot women now. He's all good, you know. Well, the post credit scene should have been care him. Of. Should have yeah. been it should have been him in the post credit scene sneaking up to the sword and grabbing it and going, "I have the power," and, like, <laughs> and he's the villain in the next. <laughs> oh so, man. Yeah, but Langella, everybody said it already. Langella's got the best dialogue in the movie because he, he had input on what he was going to say. And he wore that plastic, shitty-looking skull mask that was, you know, winched to his face to make the mouth move and stuff. And 
just the dialogue and the, the flowing robes and the scepter looks wonderful and the gold thing is not a good look for him, but you needed the final battle, you know, where he gets, uh, the scepter breaks, he gets popped unceremoniously, and this is about a real bitch about that final fight, is that he basically bounces into the, into the hole in the ground, and, you know. <laughs> yeah, he, he dies, at the, he falls in the end like the Emperor in Star Wars. <laughs> yes, there you go. Yeah, I love the fact that he screams, ah! and you can see his mouth not moving. <laughs> <laughs> it is much better than the fall of RoboCop's uh, Dick Jones out the fucking window. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no claymation Gumby arms for Skeletor. <laughs> Fun characters. One thing I've never cared for. I like the Tila character, but the part where they're having the shootout in, in, in the music shop. And she breaks the fourth wall and says, Woman, Woman in arms. arms. I, I, never, I never liked that. Ever. I never liked it. <laughs> Again, she's a, she's an actress. You've seen the many things. I mentioned Death Spa. And Death Spa is a film that everybody should watch because it's just batshit crazy. But um, I, I can't. And she oh. had her Captain Marvel moment before Captain Marvel. Yes. I know her from, uh, let's see, Dust Devil she was in. Um, yeah. What else has she been in? She's been in some she's been stuff. She's been in a bunch of stuff. I just can't recall. She was in a that Boy Scout. Well, in this, yes. she's been in a skin tight gray outfit in this film, so that's all that's I care fine. about. <laughs> fucking, fucking man at arms, you know? A good soldier always knows to follow his nose. You know, going after the fucking <laughs> Robbie's ribs. I love it, man. <laughs> fucking Gwildor talking to a cow. There's so many little charming moments in this fucking movie. How did they get this, how did they get this food on all these little white sticks? Those yes. were rib bones. <laughs> so barbaric. Shut up. Shut up. Shut eat, up and know. eat the fucking meat. <laughs> you know you're fucking hungry as shit. <laughs> it's a long way from a 30th. So according uh, to uh, IMDb, which, by the way, this movie has a higher rating than Street Fighter. Um, as as it well, it should. It should. <laughs> Like Street Fighter has like four, and this has like five point <laughs> four on the V. Uh, but the award, I looked at the awards section, and Billy Barty was nominated for worst supporting actor. Oh, that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he didn't, didn't deserve the best supporting actor nod, but he didn't deserve a worst supporting actor nod. I've already said it. I have a Billy Bartley as fucking Gwildor action figure standing on my table right in front of me holding the fucking key. Whoever voted that could suck a dick. Yeah, it's weird. I'm, I'm looking at Billy Bartley's awards here, and, it's, and it says like he was nominated for Worst Actor in 1981 for Under the Rainbow. Uh, the oh, stink it, is, bad. It, is, it is a bad movie, though. He got two nominations for Worst Supporting Actor and Most Annoying Fake Accent. Oh man! Then eighty-seven, uh, He Man, and then uh, eighty-eight, uh, he was nominated for uh, Willow Worst Supporting Actor. <laughs> oh, oh it was great mind. in Willow too, man! Fuck oh, pick, pick, pick a finger, man. I'll what give you have... the middle one to go fuck yourself, okay? You know? <laughs> what do they have against Billy Barty? <laughs> I don't know, man. That's horrible. Billy, Bar- Billy Barty's a treasure, man. He's a treasure. He always, you know. Now, Under the Rainbow is not very good. In case the listeners do not know. This is a film in which they got the last remaining munchkins from The Wizard of Oz and Chevy <laughs> Chase and Carrie Fisher and made a movie with them. And it's, it's not very good, you know. How much cocaine went into that movie? A lot, apparently. <laughs> the munchies were some freaks, I hear. They taught me how to do the lollipop jib. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> oh, this podcast is... I hope you guys are enjoying v- Mr. Van Damme guest star got the show because it's... it's uh, it's, it's magical. Yeah. <sighs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's what I'll do every single time I'm on this show. After my review, I'll throw Van Damme's review in there. It'll be great. <laughs> There's well, something I... about this movie, Screamers, that makes me want to do an eight ball of Kylie's tits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but I, I have I still have great great amount, great amount of affection for this movie. Like I said, the costumes were heavy as shit. I mean, I hear that the guy who played Beast Man would literally pass out from heat exhaustion because of that massive costume. <laughs> and um, man, it's just so much fun. I mean that um, I think it, it, it helps to have uh, 
a horse master slash sword master slash stuntman on the set as as Blade to teach you some shit. Right. I think he did. He did the fighting scenes for Langella at the end of the movie. I think. Yeah, he was the uh, I yeah. believe the stunt coordinator for the film too. You know, he coordinated all the fights. This would be a fun guy to <laughs> talk to. I should I should email this guy or something. <laughs> 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 Let's talk about stunts, man. But uh, I love it. I'm gonna kick it back to Philip and ask him anything else I can say about the film. Oh, what do you give it one uh, to ten? Uh, well, uh, first I must say, um, I just watched these two movies back to back today. Uh, <laughs> So my brain is a little numb. Uh, so I, I wish I could have enjoyed this movie better because I just watched Street Fighter and I watched this and I go, oh. <laughs> but uh, this movie definitely, it had uh, it had more charm, I must say, than Street Fighter. And uh, it has a good spirit to it. And the Frank Niella uh, gives a one hell of a performance as, as Skeletor in this movie. And uh, there's something very charming about, like, the sets and the 80s-ness of, you know, the style of the, uh, of the whole thing. So I, I had a little, and the music by Bill Conti, which is so bombastic. It, uh, it's kind of, kind of, it's charming. I kind of, yeah, kind of like it. I give it uh, about four out of ten, I guess. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. I, I forgive you this time around. Cameron, what do you say, man? <laughs> Uh, like I, I said earlier, I love it probably for all the, the wrong reasons, but some of the good ones. It's, you know, it may not be the Masters of the Universe we wanted, but it was the one we got, and I I, I loved revisiting it. I watched it on uh, my special edition uh, Laserdisc, cause the way God intended. <laughs> and, uh, actually, that's the way I watch both movies. I watch them both. I'm like, do I have these on Laser? Yes, I do. I'm breaking them both out. But anyway, Um I love it. It's a fun movie. It uh, I like it more now as an adult than I did as a kid. Um, I think it's you know pretty pretty solid. The effects are good. The matte paintings are great. The the uh, Castle Grayskull looks awesome. It would have been probably better if it had been placed more on Eternia than Earth. But I still like it. I give it a seven and a half. Ryan, right on. Uh, as far as me. This film has flaws. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. But <laughs> God damn it, if it didn't capture my heart, this film. Uh, Dolph Lundgren, I think he's a treasure in this film. He looks the part. Can't talk, but that's fine. <laughs> Skeletor. God, Frank Langella is he's a marvel in this film. And I will say he is probably one of the greatest villains ever put on film for this role. Uh, <laughs> It's, uh, you're allergic to my statement. That's cool. Um, <laughs> it, the effects are good. Gwildor's fun. The cosmic key. I love the cosmic key. I wish I had a replica of that thing. It's 80s goodness. It feels like Star Wars. It feels like Conan. It feels like all these things that I enjoy watching. I'm going to give it two grades. Technically, I would give this film probably a seven. But personally, this movie's a 10 for me because I could watch this over and over again and it doesn't fucking matter. I have it on DVD. I have it on Blu-ray. I have it all. I love it. I don't have it on the coveted laser disc as you do. So damn you. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I can't I can't follow this film for what it is because the limitations that they were <laughs> – forced to have and the money that they had and the, the forced ending that they were supposed to have this film is far better than it should be and it could quite possibly be one of canon's best films in my mind and uh so there you go message universe rocks the house yeah i i i, I love it you know I, I forgot to mention we've mentioned lots of things but the throne room, the Eternian, the, the scenes you got in Eternia, the the, seat, the set was so big they had to combine two, combine two sound stages together. And I think <laughs> what you get of Eternia, which is basically this throne room, looks pretty fucking amazing because they built all of those sets. Right. Mm. And they're gorgeous. And I, I got to say they're gorgeous, man. So credit there. We, we also forget forgot to mention that this was produced by Edward Er Pressman, who also produced Street Fighter the movie. Wow. wow! Oh wow! Connections you know, all over the place. My you know. God, he also produced the Conan movies. Huh. Oh yes, yes, yes. Oh, <laughs> the Crow. I now I want to watch. Now I want to watch Conan. See, and, and, uh, have a good time. Um, oh, <laughs> 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 oh, sluts! 
you know. <laughs> um, Bill Conti uh, score is amazing. It's really good, man. The Superman score. Oh yeah. Uh, well, okay, kind of is. Leave, leave, leave it alone, Philip. Okay, you, you hurt my soul, man. You hurt my soul. Okay, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it. You know, but um, borrowed from John Williams. Maybe I'm a big maybe here, man. <laughs> D- Dolph is fine as He Man and I, Prince Adam. Langella owns the whole fucking thing. Costumes are immaculate. We mentioned all this stuff before, but um, I I gotta give it an eight out of ten. I have too much love for it and. You could like both. Let's put it that way. You could like the series, which I think the tops for me is that Cartoon Network series from the early 2000s. Amazing show. Gives those characters so much more depth. So if you haven't seen it, it's two seasons. You get you get a... Um, what's what's the B guy's name, Ryan? I forget the B guy's oh, name. Oh, fuck. Um, yes. You, you, get an, you, you get an episode about him that gives that character depth. Oh, right, right. And Tila with her goddamn bow staff flipping through the air like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, beating the shit out of people. <laughs> fucking wonderful <laughs> they're allowed to be violent not like on the original show but again watch that doc it's amazing okay what's um, the doc called again one last time but p- power of by the power of gray skull <laughs> i think it's the definitive um definitive history of masters of the universe Behind I think the it power is. of gray skull it's getting watched son it's getting watched yeah <laughs> um yeah eight out of ten uh, and last but probably not least what does john claude van damme give this movie i would give this movie a solid, I should have been in it. <laughs> there you go, because then it would be a 10. Right now it's a 2. I have the power! Yeah, you imagine that? People would have believed I'm from Italia. <laughs> what a tiny He Man. <laughs> Why is He Man so short? Why is He Man doing splits all the time? What's going on? <laughs> I don't want innocent people to die. <laughs> I don't want this to end, but we have to. We're gonna we're gonna come back and do something sloppy for you with with Court, myself, and Suzanne, where we do Hellraiser Bloodline, and then we close out the show. Frighteningly close to hell. <laughs> a new dimension in terror. Nowhere to run, no escape. Has a very familiar face. I am forever. 500 years ago, a mystical box was created. The key that unlocked the door to absolute evil. Oh my god. From one generation to the next, the descendants of its creator have been cursed. Kill them all. Now, the evil must be stopped to close the gates of hell forever. Welcome to Oblivion. Hellraiser Bloodline. Hello, beepers. It's time to get sloppy once again, this time for the the fourth installment of the Hellraiser series, the prequel slash sequel to Hell, Hellraiser, known as Hellraiser Bloodline, or Hellraiser 4, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> With me today is Mr. Court Sives. How you doing, sir? Uh, the seconds are getting incredibly way too sloppy. We're on the fourth. At this point, it's going to start looking like grilled cheese whenever you pull that sandwich apart. You know what I'm saying? Duh. Yeah, or like that. No, we haven't quite gotten to the, that that peanut butter and jelly sandwich that's been mashed in your backpack for for all day long. <laughs> that's no, like, but we we well, will we will shortly. <laughs> that's like sloppy seven or something. We'll see. The... <laughs> yeah, sloppy fifths and sloppy sixes are getting really really nasty in this one. Just just the yeah, soggy. One of these, I'm sorry. I said one of these is pretty much that peanut butter and jelly sandwich that got shoved in the back of your locker that you found six months later. Yeah. That you turned in as a science experiment on bacteria yeah, growth right. and got an A. <laughs> yes, yes. Take a picture of it every day, you know. Suzanne's here. How you doing, girl? I'm doing well. It quarantined. The cats are trying to murder me. 
<laughs> they do that. Yeah, one of my cats will stand. When I'm coming down in the morning, and until I have coffee, I don't see straight, nor do I speak the English language. But she will sit on the steps just so I can't see her. And about three times this week, I've almost fallen down the stairs. And Mel is sitting there looking at me like, damn it, I'll get you next time. Well, unfortunately, you don't have William Hickey for story time, story time exposition anymore. But you do have Buster Point extra to, to go hunt that cat. And that ain't not bad. That, that, by the way, that by the way, that by the way, that's my reference, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's one of my that's my favorite story, Black Cat. I'm sorry, because uh, Buster Point Dexter is nuts. For, for yeah, David Johansson that plays one. a great hitman, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, he was so good. We're gonna tell about that right now, though. We're talking about Hellraiser Bloodline. In your plot synopsis is this: In the 22nd century, a scientist attempts to, to right the wrong his ancestor created. The puzzle box that opens the gates to hell and unleashes Pinhead and his Cenobite legions. The stars... Bruce Ramsey. Valentina Vargas. Doug Bradley, of course, as as our Pinhead. Uh, Who else in this movie? Adam Scott. And Adam Scott's hair. This gets two credits, in my opinion. Um, (laughs) Yes. Got Kim Myers, who you may know from Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2. And that's like the like the ooh the big stars of this movie. What going on that? Uh, this is an Al Smithy project because Kevin Yeager was slide up to direct and basically he got fucked over by the studio. So why they even have his name on here, I have no idea on IMDb. But it's not supposed to be because he wanted his name off of this project. So but bully on you, there, there, fucking IMDb. But um, kick it to Suzanne first and ask her what she thought of Bloodline. Ooh. This one, you know, there's parts of this movie I like, and most parts of it I just don't. I actually saw this in the theater the night it came out. It was like me, Pat, and like maybe 10 other people. This is how popular it was at the time. It, it's, it was declining quickly. But I really wish there was a whole lot less pinhead in this movie because it was terrible. It, I swear to God, it, you could turn this movie into a drinking game every time you said suffering. You'd be dead in like 45 minutes. <laughs> you it, And he was just, the, the storyline, because you had your, you know, when the bo- the creation of the box, then you had the modern times, and then you had Space Station Hellraiser. I really wish they had picked one thing and stuck with it, but... It just was, it, it, it just jumped. It was fucking annoying to watch it because I'm like, wait, okay. Oh, wait, that's Adam Scott's uh, 1800s hair. Okay, I know where I am now. And then we had the 90s. God, I can't believe that was ever a hairstyle hair. Well, it's glorious. And the whole thing with the new designer and his wife, that was just that plot line that went fucking nowhere. You know, the, the the kid and this, and they just, for me, just that one just, they dropped it. Like, well, what the hell is going on here? And now we're in space. And oh my God, it was, it, it, the movie just looked cheap throughout. I would have, like I said, I wish they'd stuck with maybe the creation of the box. That was, I think, the most interesting of the three storylines to me anyway. And maybe at this point, you could have done like a little bit of, background on the certain Cenobites during the creation of this box. And that would have been the better movie if I had written it. But this one is just, oh my God, it's just kind of a hot mess. And the the only Cenobite I actually kind of liked in this movie, even though it looked terribly cheap, I like the dog. I wish they had spent a little bit more money on the Cenobite dog. Yeah, the dog said about it was yeah. fun. Yeah, I, I like know, I seeing it. the dog getting created. You know, that would have been really yeah. neat. I agree. I wish they had stuck with one of the storylines, and that's pretty much about all I can say about this one. Yeah, I'll, I'll say right now that there is a cut of this movie, and I forget which edition it's on. You guys have to look into this one, but it's a, it's a foreign release in which there is a director's cut of this movie that's longer and way different. I've never seen this, but I plan on seeking it out one of these days. So that, there's something to look for, guys, to see a whole different version of the film. So I'll kick it the court again. Yeah, what now? I'm sorry. 
Oh, no, I was just going to say, yeah, maybe they fix the issues I have with this one. Like, like I, I, said, I think I said it. It's a film that was taken away from Kevin Yeager. It's just Kevin Yeager's film, you know, to make, and it got taken away from him and, and changed, like, drastically, so. Yeah, that sucks. But, uh, Court, tell us about it, man. Okay, I also saw this in theaters, and um, this was a movie that I actually took a date to. Um, yeah, it didn't go so well when you choose a film like Hellraiser 4 and say things like, God damn, that's hot, whenever someone gets strangled to death. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, look, lady. I'm wearing a fucking death metal T-shirt. You knew what you were getting into. <laughs> um, now, in all seriousness, uh, I, when I was watching this, and it was somewhat of a of a date kind of a thing that I I, I was with, um, it was a it was a girl that I had seen kind of off and on and everything. And there were parts of the movie that um, I was maniacally laughing that were supposed to be so shocking and horrific that my quote unquote date at the time had to cover my mouth because I was laughing too loud. <laughs> and she thought I was ruining it for the other two people that were in the theater. <laughs> with us. <laughs> and uh, so, I mean, like there's parts of this film you can see in the movie itself some really great ideas. So I'm actually very interested in that director's cut to kind of see what it is that we would have gotten. Cause just as like Suzanne had said, it's more like vignettes and, and various pieces of a story. And they're trying to tell this multi-generational battle that happens where an initial toy maker's bloodline gets cursed. Hence the title bloodline that, you know, he's going to have to undo what his ancestors had done. And it was basically getting hired. The, the La Marche, La Marchant La Marchand configuration. Sorry, I don't speak French because I'm American. I only speak freedom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, so it's like this whole entire deal. And the stuff that takes place in the past is absolutely fascinating. I love the old school style black magic and how the box is supposed to make it that much easier for the Cenobites in hell to basically find their way into our world. The main issue that I had about it is Barker's hell is not the same as the Christian hell. And this film conflated the two together very badly. I don't know how much of that is being fucked with with, say, Merrimax, because they're the ones who released this. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, and they are notorious for just fucking up movies left and right and just recutting them and doing all sorts of stuff, including sexually assaulting their actresses. So, you know, there is that. Uh, so, I mean, the movie is obviously very troubling and everything like that, and it's kind of hard to watch it in this day and age. But when I saw it at, like... You know, I forget what what age it was, maybe 16 or 15 or something like that on that date. I thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I was having a great old time. And it helped the young lady that was dating me at the time know that I was definitely not the one for her because I'm a little too terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, Suzanne. You have another story to enjoy this one more like we did with uh, part three. Oh, yes. I love it, Court. Oh, this is man. the movie that cost me a, rela a possible relationship because my date was freaked out on how much I liked it. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah. I gotta go back to the Kevin Yeager thing because this pretty much says everything about, you know, the differences. Uh, Kevin Yeager disowned this version uh, with cuts made behind his back due to conflicting artistry ideas. Yeager's version contained much more graphic imagery, plot, and explained everything that happened in the film. Producers disagreed and demanded Pinhead should appear sooner despite every version of the script until then having him appear around the 40-minute mark. When Jaeger was un unable to satisfy, he disowned it and never fi finished filming the final scenes. Uh, Joe Chappelle, who gave us... What did he give us? Oh, yeah. Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers, which is a film I don't have a problem with. I prefer the, prefer the producer's cut myself. Same. Uh, yes. Was brought to finish the film, right. filming new scenes and rewrites, including the narrative framing devices. Some scenes of the original script were, th were thus never shot. Man, oh man. But this film for me, um, I was talking to Suzanne, and this is true. The flashback stuff is much more interesting than the space stuff, because especially when we get into, uh, not the next film, but the film after. This film is about the long con, you know, because the, the Le, Le Marchand... You know, he has this whole concept of once once he finds out what the box's intentions of, comes up with this concept of the light, which is uh, we trap our, our, our demons and basically end 
his issues because the whole the idea of his bloodline being cursed because he finds out about this box is like the whole through line through the movie, and that's real fine. But like like you guys said, the two pinhead too early, too often, and he should have respond. He should have um, expanded more on the the um, Angelique character who's dispatched, you know, rather unceremoniously. But then again, the movie was taken from Kevin Yeager, so I can't really say, hey, you did a bad job, because it was out of his hands at that point, so I can't really say that he did a bad job. Um, fucking Set of My Dog was awesome. L- looked great. Um, I'd imagine all CG, but he looked real fun. I thought it was funny, the interactions between him and Pinhead. Uh, Adam, Scott's, <laughs> Adam Scott's hair uh, deserves uh, extra credit, like I mentioned Adam from, Scott's super creepy rapiness. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, yeah. I know. It was so weird seeing Ben Wyatt like that. This is like his, his first thing about, you know, <laughs> so he's just grateful to be casted. It is kind of, well, what, what a thing to start with. You know, I just really just, just chewing the scenery in this fucking movie. And I loved every minute of it for the short time we got to have him in the movie. Um, I mentioned a long con. Basically, your plot device this film is older, you know, in, uh, in the timeline, Le, Le Marchand in, in 2127 has built a space station in order to release the demon, trap the demon, and then, you know, endgame demon, which you get at the end of this movie, because he has created the light within this space station, <laughs> which which folds. Where, uh, from the looks of this thing, where does anybody even stay on this space station if it does all this folding like a goddamn Transformer? <laughs> Uh, the hallways are hollow joints, right? And the way that they end up doing it, it's like those hollow joint hinges where the ball and everything fits together. So it actually is rotating on the inside, and then the hallways are like all the way through that. So all the hallways in the ship, all those corridors, are the actual folding joints, and that's how they walk around it. That's the only way it could make any sense at all, because everything else is ridiculous and stupid. Oh, yeah, it's fucking twin centibytes, fucking real dumb looking when it's created, you know? Oh, that was so stupid. <laughs> I do love that conversation that they have about if the if the one brother would actually, he was getting any questions on a date, if she, was asking, like, if he would sleep with a trans woman, and he's like, yeah, as long as she's cut or, or whatever and everything like that, where yeah. she's had the full-fledged surgery. And I'm like, wow, that's surprisingly progressive for the 90s. Um, this twin is actually relatively okay, and he wasn't misgendering the person or anything while he was doing that discussion, and that kind of struck me as like a, a nice little added bonus to have in the film. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Well, I thing, remember, well, I'm sorry. Oh no, I was just going to say about the the space station. So apparently, it took them a hundred years and several generations to what save up a, what eighty billion dollars to build a space station for, uh, for some the- reason. It's for the this technology was... to be there where it needed to be to be able to defeat Pinhead and actually trap him. They needed it to be on a space station with no other souls around and blah, 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 blah. They don't make it clear, but that's what they were trying to make it seem like. But yeah, I mean, that's at least $80 billion to build and launch a fucking space station. Or <laughs> build the pieces reason... individually, launch them, and then assemble it on those hinge joints I was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remote control, or hey, nanotechnology, it can assemble itself. <laughs> well, then what we needed is the Jason X version of Pinhead, where he's like half cybernetic being, half demon from hell. Oh, don't, don't, <laughs> don't, 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 don't get me rock hard here, man. I'm just thinking about that now, see? <laughs> right? Right? I'm not fucking around. I wanted to see that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, he, he needed he also need all the extra time to create that Pink Floyd esque laser light show, and you know, so they can get the rights to that music. But that didn't happen either. So disappointing on so many levels, people. Disappointing on so many levels. Man, oh man. <laughs> um, we're about to talk about this one, but I'm gonna kick kick back to court again and ask him anything else like to say about the film, and what does he give it one to ten? Um, yeah, I've, I've pretty much exhausted everything that I had to say about it. Um, I still enjoy watching the film. It's still a lot of fun, but I think it's more nostalgia of the time frame I saw it in. And this is the only one I got to see in theaters, unfortunately, but it was just the right time at the right place to ruin my prospective relationship. And, you know, I'm, I'm better, I'm better for it. Um, I, I have no ill will towards that particular young lady or anything like that. I mean, we're, we're fine and everything and, you know, it, it's cool. 
<laughs> so the, I'm not going to I'm not going to blame the film for me being unhappy or anything like that. So that, that's no big deal. Um, I don't sound bitter at all. Um, <laughs> it's fine. You know, th- these are where the films really start to drop off is very sharply after four. So um, I, I think this was probably about I would say about a six and a half. Like it's not quite a seven, but it's just, it's above just being okay. Like five is like, it's okay. And anything below five is like, Oh man, this is not so great. So it's, it's about a six and a half for me. Cool. Uh, Suzanne. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to break this down. Okay. I give the parts that took place in the past for the creation of the box and Angelique and Angelique, which that was her name, wasn't it? Yes. And I'll give that part. Naya hush. I'll give I'll give that section of the movie a seven because it was really interesting. I would have liked to have seen it expanded on, but I'm going to have to see this long cut to see what actually happened. The rest of the movie gets about a two and a half because it's just a mess. Well, I will say that 84 films is a German company. They released it on Blu-ray, but I imagine it's like non-existent now as far as whether to buy it. Because, um, let's take oh, a look at the best it. whilst I'm on here. And, uh, da, 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 Germany, Germany, Germany. Yeah, I don't even see a price for it on here. It's in, it's in German. Okay, English language. And I'm talking through all this, and that's okay, people. Yeah, it is <laughs> It is out of print, people. That's okay. If you can, um, illegally find it, I'll, I'll condone it on this end. Send it our way, would you please? You know, really appreciate that. But, um... I give yeah, it a, you, I, you can at me on Twitter about that. I want to know how you found it. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just email it to me. Email me a Google Drive link or something. CinemaSciencecard at gmail.com. Somebody's got to send me again to count the demo fuckers. Man. But I, I digress. But um, Is that still a thing? <laughs> I think so. One of those are still a thing. Um, again, I hope you know bootlegging. But for this case, yes, do it. Do it now. But uh, six, 6.5 for me as well. Same as court. Good, but not as good as it could be. But like I said, all these things we said on the show about Jaeger's film being ripped from him and just completely destroyed and restructured. Uh, I, I want to see that film, and I hope we get to real soon. So I think we're going to come back again during some point during this retrospective. And I hate that fucking word and review the work print co- copy of Bloodline if we could find it. Hello, Naya. Yes, girlfriend. Hello to you. But um. <laughs> That is the end of this one. And we're going to come back in the next episode and talk about Hellraiser Inferno, which I'll say is a better film than the current film we just watched in the state. I don't want to talk about it, though. Um, we'll get right that, to that at uh, the next episode, like I said. But uh, as Eric would once say, we'll see you all again in part two. <laughs> If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which Versus the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. Hello, folks. My face is flush, and this is the end of the show. Good journey. I I, I, yeah, good journey. Good journey. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Good, good times. Journey. Good times. <laughs> Who wants to go home? Who wants to come with me? You can't come, though, because of COVID. You can't come to my house, man. It sucks. You can go. But, uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. But um, thank you for all these gentlemen for doing this this uh, amazing dude bro edition of uh, 
episode of the Beef Podcast. R- Ryan Lewis, tell us tell us the good and not the bad, man. What you got going on? And hopefully it's something good. Uh oh, what's going on right now? Uh nothing. Nothing's going Nothing. on whatsoever, but as I said, Graveshift Radio is in talks about coming back. There's a good chance it'll be coming back on the um, podcast under the stairs network. It'll probably be coming back. It's been in talks, so that's in the works. Other than that, that's all we got. Cool. Philip O'Neill. There is no Philip, only Van Damme. I got my new movie, White Eye Young. The Legend of Johnny Jones coming up soon. <laughs> no, uh, well, I'm back. <laughs> Who is this man doing an impression of me? <laughs> I was doing Christopher Lambert, not you, Van Damme. Hehehe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 you can't find me at all. I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, everywhere and nowhere. Um, I don't have any. No, you can't find. No, <laughs> nothing coming up. <laughs> Cameron, t- tell us about yeah. your, your your budding show, sir. Uh, well, I've recorded the first episode, like I said, a few days ago. I'm calling it Cinema Degeneration. I'm having a couple of different segments. I'm going to kind of have a, a grindhousey exploitation segment, a segment dedicated to ret- retroactive kind of. Media, VHS and Laserdisc, I'm going to do a segment dedicated to uh, Italian horror. So Mm. I have the first segment done. I'm recording the next two segments uh, here in the next week or so. I'm still trying to schedule the last one. But I hope to have the the first show ready and edited, hopefully, uh, to drop here within the next week. So I'll, uh, I'm going to start up with like a a Twitter for it and an Instagram because I don't do any of that shit. And my wife does, though, so she is going to help me kind of figure that all out because I strictly just am good enough to just uh, tech savvy enough to just use Facebook. So um, she's going to help me with that and kind of promote it a little bit better. But like I said, like first episode's down. I'm just waiting to record the next uh, couple segments and nothing else I have is going going on. Everything else is canceled. (laughs) Unfortunately, but But, yeah, time being, time being, for time being, yeah. This show is going on, and we're doing it consistently, which makes me happy as hell. So, uh, Cinema Beef, Burning for Springwood can both be found on the same feed as Cinema Beef. Uh, two Drink Venom commentaries can be found on their own feed. I'll ball on legionpodcast.com. Um, we be doing a few watch parties. If you guys see something up in the, in the group, uh, download the cast app. You can watch movies with, uh, with some people, Cameron and myself, for sure. We, we, we sit in and watch movies together sometimes, and you can uh, yeah. join... It's free. Uh, download the cast app. You can watch the film through the app, through the through the beef lounge room, and uh, type in some comments, and we'll we'll have a good time. We we me and my buddy Wally and Cameron uh, celebrated Rex Manning Day the other day, so the, you know the important things. And with yes. all that's going on in the world right now, man, it's a perfect time to get involved in something like that. Yeah, hey, just come, watch, well. come watch some flicks with us. How else we gonna do? Might be something sacrilegious this weekend. Something Italian and sacrilegious, perhaps. So. I, I I got some of those handy, so it could be. Good. I love both of those things. It could be a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, zombie Jesus! Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, support the Legion. Uh, I think I think it was called like like Le- Legion Relief Fund. You know, Patreon's important too. But you know, during these trying uh, disease times, where a lot of folks are out of work and or and or waiting for their stimulus check to come, um, they broke as hell and they need some money. And I think we really raised like six hundred dollars so far for. Our, our Legion podcasters and uh, right on. So check check it out. You know, people got to eat. You know, sucks, but you know, people got to eat. But uh, I'm gonna leave that one alone. Can't just eat toilet paper, right? Yeah, well, yeah. You know, they, they might have to. They, they bought so much of it, the fucking assholes. You know? <laughs> Dicks, dickholes. <laughs> I had to buy seven cases of toilet paper from so many splits. My asshole is the size of a hubcap. <laughs> well, I, I don't use it at all. I use the shows, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, for Mr. Lambert, Mr. Van Dam, and Mr. Stallone, I am Gary Hello. Hill, and this has been the Orson Beef Podcast, where if you've got beef, we've got the cocaine. I mean, the grinder. I mean, the grinder, you know. Uh <laughs> 
<laughs> See y'all next time. Uh, oh, it's going to be so great when you get the fucking revelations. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> great, great value, uh, pinhead. <laughs> he looks like fucking Popeye in a pinhead suit. <laughs> he oh. does. I've seen rubber suits that look better than that. A gag, gag, gag. I will tear your soul apart. We'll shoot back into this again. Angels to some, demons to others. <laughs> <laughs> You open the box. We came. Oh, you know, most of these ideas sound better than the actual movie itself. They will tell you so hard apart. Breathe, everybody. Breathe. Three. I suggest you the scene where he opened the box with his pelvis muscles. <laughs> I said I could rub the circle on the box with my balls. <laughs> okay. Oh, goddamn fucking heart attack, man. I've, I've, I've already had had a couple of them. I'm, I'm good, man. <laughs> oh, man. One time I did six lines of coke off Kylie's snatch, and I had seven heart attacks. <laughs> uh, apparently, I ain't, I got my heart attacks eating Burger King, man. But damn, I could have done so much more with my life. Just imagine. <laughs> and, then, and then my nose got to clap, you know. <laughs> I'm having uh, trouble getting work nowadays, so I could sell you the video. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> said, I'll buy that for a dollar. <laughs> Go back into this at a three, two, and a one, 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 two, and a one.